girl, you were scandalous, and I loved it. Uh-huh. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. Welcome to the show. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, where today, it's just me and you. I love it this way. Listen, there's a lot to talk about, though. Bill Clinton, yeah, he's going through something. Tony Braxton is dealing with an issue. Miles Davis, we'll talk about 50 Cent. We'll talk about Nicolette Sheridan. Oh, how about that? Aaron Spelling, shut up. You see, these are the things that we do here on the show. If you're brand new, you'll you'll figure it out in a minute. Plus, next hour's advice, advice hour, where I am taking um, your snafus over the fax machine. Um, currently at eight six six Wendy Fax, and of course the phone lines will be open next hour for your um, calls, and I'll try to help you out the best I can. Plus, I brought in my list of what we as women never want to see our men in. Men, make sure you're listening. (laughs) It is what it is, people. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Uh Oh, Get it popping, everybody. Welcome to the experience. It's my pleasure to be here with you all. <sighs> I mean, you know. I can't stop thinking about food. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about it. I just I just can't. <sighs> oh, do you want to hear a quote from Oprah? She says, I'm the same person. I've just grown to be more of myself with better shoes. I like that quote. But I like that quote. You know what I mean? Like, you you shouldn't... I would imagine a lot of famous people feel the same way, you know. I'm I'm still the same person. It's everybody around me who's changed, they say. There's just certain things about you. And you'll find this. You know what? Age does this, too. Like, if you're 18 years old and you're listening to the Miss Wendy experience right now, by the time you're 38 years old, you're... There's a lot of you who's going to be still very much the same. But what ends up happening is you start to say, I don't give an F, is basically what it, what it amounts to. And the very way that you were, but always kept it in because you didn't want to be ridiculed when you were 18, you become fearless to be that person on the outside. That's what I've discovered about uh, age. And I still have more living to do. I can't wait until I can really start to just, you know, by the time I'm 65, you're not even going to want me in a room. 
Because I'm really just going to be, well, um, mm -hmm. I could have told you that when he walked in the door. He was about as gay as the day is long. You know what I mean? You know, older people just are out of order. And we think they're out of order. No, they've always been that way. They were that way when they were 15. <laughs> it's just that when you say things when you're 15, people make fun of you. Goose, you're a man of a certain age. You're older than me. Isn't that true, Goose? Aren't you a lot of, a lot of you is the same person that you were. It's just that much of your personality today is, is brought out more because you're you a certain. Bolder. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I mean. Bold. What did I call it? I don't give an F. Yes. Same difference. <laughs> same difference. It's the same difference. So that's Oprah. You're bolder with better shoes when you get older. Do you want to hear a quote from Naomi Campbell? Because she's really, really blonde. I, I don't know. I, I'm not into the blonde Naomi. Did I just commit a crime by saying that? I'm sorry. And I saw, um, I saw only glimpses of the Tyra Banks show because the office is not set up with the full cable yet. We're still going through issues in the office. They're open light fixtures. My son, he's, he can't even come up here without sticking his finger in something. He can't come until everything's closed up. Missing tiles in the ceiling and whatnot. But the furniture's fabulous. Thanks to Stephanie Cohen. Over at Benjamin Rugg and Home Furniture, uh, furniture Imports. Benjamin Rugg, uh, in Secaucus, New Jersey. When you go to their website, the first page shows a lot of our office furniture. Go to stephaniecohen.com and see what the pink room looks like. Uh, but so Naomi Campbell, I don't know, Gay Steve, do you like her blonde or do you like her black and straight? I like it black and straight. Me, I saw the blonde on um, Tyra. And I'm not. That's what I was saying. I yeah. saw it over the weekend on Talk Soup. And I'm not a huge fan of it. I look black and straight. Yeah, it's too unnatural with the blonde. It's, it's it's too unnatural with the black straight, but it's it's at least all right. But see, you know what she does with the blonde? She's got the uh, contacts going, mm -hmm. and then the, the unusually long uh, length, and then the unusual color, and then the BDPs up at the hairline. It's just all too much going yeah, on. Yeah, I agree. She really does needs to take a, um, a baby hair lesson from Foxy Brown, because <laughs> Foxy Brown, say what you want about her. She gets the Baby Hair of the Year Award. Homegirl tries to play it off like, you know, her hair is something other than, you know, like underneath the weave, my hair is like a nonza. No, it's not. But you've got a good uh, baby hair game, Foxy. You get points for that. Can you hear me? Hello? Huh? That was Foxy showering it. Oh, it. firing her shot. Okay. I didn't know she hears you. Thank you, Foxy. This is what Naomi says. I like the fact that men become weaker around blondes. Yeah, until they see that the drapes don't match the carpet. I was going to say, she probably doesn't have carpet. Yeah, I'm sure she takes everything off. That's the best. I was talking to a 64-year-old woman yesterday about this time she called in, you know. And so she's got herself a 38-year-old um, jump off. Oh, no, 51-year-old jump off. She called me about whether to get her a birthday gift or something like that. But you know me, I have to ask about the sex. I'm very interested in how life could potentially be for me, for better or for worse. You know, so I learn from the older crows. I love to ask them about sex. And, you know, because the rest of it I can figure out myself. I, You know, I got an older mother and an older aunt and stuff like that. It's just I'm not going to talk to them about that. You know. So, you know. I've gotten a glimpse of, you know, the older women and, you know, what all's doing down there. And she said, um, you know, it's gray and she doesn't shave or anything. She says it's gray and it's thinned a bit, but she still gets it in. Art was over there saying, ew, the whole time. And I asked her also, don't, cause don't you want to know this? I don't care that you're 23 and cute and tight. Don't you want to know whether at 64 you're still supposed to be given professionals? All her girlfriends say, ew, I can't believe you do that. And she says, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And she told me that she's the people's champ. And at 64, do you want to know whether a man will even go that far down near that? Yes, they do. According to our friend from yesterday, you give professional and you get professional. I loved talking with her. I find it fascinating talking, you know, with older women. You know, older, cute women or cute in the personality or whatever you want. Older, zesty women, not, you know, 64, the new 84. That is not, you know, you are not my flavor. You're depressing me with that. 
Because even when women are sick, you know, you can be broken down. You can have one breast removed from breast cancer. You can be on a cane. But it's your spirit. I love an older woman with a nice, youthful spirit. Able to, you know, throw a four-letter word at me and say, give me some of that brown juice. My Aunt Marilyn was over at Thanksgiving. We drank the brown juice. We had a good old time. I love that. Gives us hope. Who wants to be broken down? Did you see Being Farrah last night on TV? All right. Too much plastic surgery. But I'll be damned. She was teasing and popping and scratching her hair weave like a homeless person, wasn't she? She wasn't even going like this, the pat. She was just going for the straight up, just scratch. I'm watching again tonight. It's a date every night this week, except for tomorrow night. I'll be at the comedy experience, but um, the Chasing Farrah. Steve, what channel was it? Come on. Channel 34. I mean, channel um, Nickelodeon. Um, TV Land. TV Land. Do you want to hear one more quote from Catherine Zeta-Jones? I like Zeta-Jones. I, do, I definitely think she's older than the 35 years old that she protests to be. She's more like 35 than new 48. You know? Like, like she, you know, and her eyes are falling faster than Jasmine Guy's face. You know, Zeta Jones, her, her upper lids are, are very fatty and they're falling into the lower lids. The, you know, Zeta Jones, do you think she's 35? Hell no. But no, aside from her being with that older man, I just think Zeta Jones is a lot older. She's got all those fake teeth. Not a good tooth job. They look like they're all gray and purpley up here by the gums. Well, this is her quote. I love her quote. Call me old fashioned. But nothing says I love you like a big old rock. And that's what she's talking about. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah. Well, nothing says I'm cheating on you like wild. And I can't tell you, but in my mind, I'm sorry. But I figure this will hold you down like a big old rock. Ruben Stutter. Do we even want to talk about him? <laughs> Do we even dare? Well, apparently, Sharon Stone co wrote this song called Come Together Now. And the proceeds of the song are going to be split between Habitat for Humanity and Angel's Place. Um, Angel's Place benefits the victims of Hurricane Katrina. And Habitat for Humanity, obviously, is working their fingers off trying to, you know, build the joint back up. So the song Come Together, co-written by Sharon Stone, the actress, is going to be performed by a few celebrities, including Nick Carter and Ruben Stuttered. So that's my Ruben news. Yeah. Give him an extra one. There you go. I get to work nice and early today, you know, because I'm busy doing stuff. Decorating. Decorating. Decorating the pink room. That's okay. Yes, you do a good job. When our iPod uh, Camcast, what, how does it go, Art? Podcast. podcast. When our podcast is on TV, on um, the PSP, what is that on? Yeah, the PSP, yeah. The iPod. You, when you see our iPod cast on iPod TV, <laughs> you're going to say, wow, look at Wendy's office. I got slayed so well. Made me do things I don't even do to my husband. Oh, oh my God. God. The Wendy Williams Experience. Thank you. Don't tell me I want to believe this. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. It ain't over yet. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. <laughs> Listen to what the winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win Thursday, December 1st, beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. Oh. The one and only WBLS 107.5, where we gave away $107,000. You heard all about it. We fulfilled it. And the winning begins again. A financial gain for you, I might add. 
December 1st, which is uh, Thursday. Today is the 29th of November. Um, December 1st. And then you'll be listening to Steve Harvey beginning at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, he's going to jumpstart the contest. I really don't all know what to do with the contest or anything. Um, the promotions department is in a totally different wing from the radio station. It's just too many steps to walk around there and figure out what all is going on. I just like to listen to the radio station to find out what's going on here. Yeah, I find out when you guys find out. So we'll all be listening then on Thursday morning with Steve. At 6 a.m. And uh, I know it's something about $1,000 an hour. All I know is that after $1,000 an hour, will we be able to, you know, pay the light bills? I mean, that's a lot of money. Oh, bonus. Yeah. yeah. Holiday bonus. Like, what happens? Is there going to be open bar at the, the WBLS staff Christmas party? Yeah. Which is different from a Christmas party with a purpose? Or do we have to pay for our own drinks at our own party? I hope not, too. Nicole's back there right now ordering up the liquor for the Pink Room Christmas party. Yep. The day before Dons and Divas, we're having our Pink Room Christmas party just for the Pink Room. Yep. Ordering the food. We're going to get liquor. And the party starts promptly. Zoe, let the interns know. The interns, are they invited? Top tier. Stephanie's part of top tier. You know. What's top tier? I'm going to leave that up to you and Zoe. Now, see why you haven't been talking about exactly top <laughs> top tier interns. You know, because nobody's paying for the drinks the seniority? and the food. Seniority. Okay. I can name off the top of my head. I like Zoe. I like all of you all, though, but Zoe and um, don't say, don't Shaylin. Don't say, don't say, don't say. I won't say names. All right, don't, we'll, we won't say names. But I, I, I know who and it has to be people who've been working here for a moment and there are a few addendums like Dominique is working her behind off back there and so is Nicole ordinarily I might say they're too new or something like that but they're not really that new are they no not those two girls that you just introduced me to today yeah because they're brand new they'll be part of some other celebration okay we got two new interns starting tomorrow Art one of them came in in a business suit I like the way she put it down oh yeah, Samantha. She Howard girl. And I met another nice girl today, too. Debbie. Debbie. And Debbie goes to uh, Pace University. Yeah. Oh, that's the one that you met, and I thought there was an intimate connection. Serious. Serious. Only for him to say, <laughs> we only had one intern. That I would ever consider. <laughs> And she's, she's a virgin. Oh, she's not. She's just as much a virgin as Zoe is. Oh, well, Zoe's a virtual slut. Come oh, to find no. out. <laughs> Honey, I came in here today and and um, was telling uh, the girls and Art and Steve and Goose. Goose, you don't really come around to the pink room much. What's up with that? Because uh, I'm always busy. He's like Dennis Rodman. He comes to work and that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. fine. That's it. So I was telling the girls in Art and Steve that uh, Mr. Marcus made a special request. It was left on my own private answering machine. I'll be in New York December 22nd expressly to come to the Dons and Divas. I was like porn in the building all wrong. Zoe hears that. Zoe immediately has to go and change her underwear. (laughs) Wait until I tell my girlfriend, Lisa Carnegie, Mr. Marcus is going to be at the Dons and Divas extravaganza. She's got much the same reaction I can count on as Zoe. <laughs> Let's talk about the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. Now, this party is happening on December 17th at the Marriott Marquis, the Broadway Ballroom. It's at 45th Street and Broadway. It's featuring the f- full holiday buffet, live entertainment, including cameo. Shut up. Exactly. And booze. So you have to get your tickets now at Ticketmaster, and we're all going to see you there. Me and Vaughn Harper, we were just talking in the hall earlier. We always happen to meet in the hall. I don't know why. Vaughn gets here hours before his show. That's his professionalism. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster. 212-307-7171. Sponsored by the New York City Department of Health and Preferred Equity Solutions. 
The proceeds uh, this year are party with a purpose benefit the anti domestic violence program Safe Horizons and also Day One. So we'll all see you. The WBLS, our Christmas party with a purpose is our Christmas party with you guys for a purpose. Uh, don't forget the date is Saturday, December 17th. Now, there's three interns in here. Nobody's screening telephone calls. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be opening the phone lines in approximately 60 seconds as soon as... Um... Oh, look at this. There's a move against AIDS going on. On Saturday, December 3rd, Wendy Williams is hosting the Move Against AIDS Dance-A-Thon at the Manhattan Center, 311 West 34th Street. I heard her talking about that yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's the big dance-a-thon. It's legendary. She's going to be there, too. And she's going to be there. And you know what? This doesn't say what time she's going to be there, but Wendy's going to be there from um, 7 to 9 p.m. Yes. Not a hard 7 and not a hard 9 no word on whether she's actually going to be bringing Artie Life at the party. I've heard him on the air promising that he was going to be a part of, you know. I heard him too. I think he's going to show up. Is he going to show up or are they going to show up together? I don't know, but they're going to both be in the building at the same time. Between 7 and 9 p.m.? Yep, they're going to both be there together. Do you think they'll make cell phone contact before entering Manhattan Center on Saturday, <laughs> December 3rd? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, because they, they're cool. They're going to do that. I need to bring a brown juice too. No, they need to meet before to get their brown juice on. Oh. So when they walk in the door, they don't walk in, they swag. Yes, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And they probably wow. also need to bring some Wendy Williams Experience oh. t-shirts. Yes, yes. And maybe some pictures. And some pictures. Wendy has her pictures. She doesn't have any pictures with Art. Maybe you could pass it on to Art that he maybe needs to bring some of those gruesome pictures that just show the gruesome side of him. I autographed a couple of your pictures at Macy's. You did? After you autographed they went to my signature, so I put it on the bottom of yours. You did? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the kids might want your picture by yourself and mine by myself. I have one for them, too. Okay. I think we will stay longer than 9 o'clock. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I just say between 7 and 9 yeah. because, you know, I don't want you to hold me to being there until 1 o'clock in the morning. But <laughs> very well could be. Let me just ask something. Do we need to brown juice it up before this or are they going to have drinks at the at the dance -a -thon? I think they probably have drinks. There. I would imagine so. Yes. Especially now if you hear us say it, please have brown juice there. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. Now, I was saying Beverly Bond was going to be DJing this year. This that was last year's information. But in the actuality, I, I forgot the lady DJ's name. But I know the Tony Touch and Junior Vasquez are going to be there and more. You know, this is on Saturday, December third. Shout out to all the children. What are you going to wear, Michael Kors? What you think I should wear? I asked Steve. I'm going to have Steve coordinate my, my gear because he knows what I A Diana Ross t-shirt. Everything has to start with a Diana Ross t-shirt or, you know, like an icon, a gay icon t-shirt. Well, then I wear Wendy Williams t-shirt then. Hello? Exactly. Yes. I must forgot. Yes, you forgot you were in that same caliber. Well, not necessarily, but I'm working my way there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. On Saturday, December 3rd, got my babysitter all lined up. I'll see you at the... At the um, um, Steve, um, Art wants you to coordinate, um, help him coordinate an outfit for the dance-a-thon on Saturday. Ooh. He already has the clothes. I think that your Dolce and Gabbana jeans fit you great. They ain't a little too tight? They, but that's what the kid's like. Okay. You I mean, Dolce jeans? Yeah. Yes, he Ooh. has them, and they're a little tight on him, but they're not... Tight is right. Tight, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> tight is right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can't exactly wear that, you know, to the big G unit show or something oh, like that. You oh, might look a little crazy. Right, right. But for the children? I'm for the children. Exactly. Right. Okay. Should I wear underwear with them? Whatever you desire. Oh. He raised his eyebrows. Oh, no, Did you see that? No, no. Steve, are you going to be coming with us? I'd love to. It's okay, Saturday. Well, let's form our posse now. Let's form <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> it's me and Art and Gay Steve from the interns. Yes. Zoe, are you are you in? Or are you you don't know you. Don't, this is not an obligation. Right. You're in or out? Yeah, out. No, out. 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 Oh. I'm in. Oh, okay. Zoe, <laughs> Nicole, hey. 
shy. Stephanie, are you in? Stephanie, you're one of those people that would take an e-pill because the rest of the oh. is doing it. Why do I worry about you? I worry about you. Don't just be in just because we're in. No, I'll be in. I want to go. Take your glasses off. Yeah, take yeah. your glasses off. Pull your hair down. Oh. The kids, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> she removed them like the bedroom look. So who's all on the phone? Oh, nobody. All right, well, just go blindly. I gave you the numbers. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Line number one. You don't. You didn't put them on hold, Steve. Yeah, you didn't put anybody on hold. <laughs> you just picked up my phone and hung up on. Hey, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> nice to have you here. Oh my God, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I was just trying for the last twenty minutes. Well, what did you originally pick up the phone for? I don't know. I was just trying. I wanted Don and Diva tickets. Well, what borough do you live? Excuse me? What borough do you live in? Essex County, New Jersey. Oh, okay. So you um, you live near Bloomfield Avenue? Yes. You know where the heat is? Yes. Well, the heat right off of Bloomfield on Washington Street has tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza if you don't want to stay around to wait to win. Okay. You understand? Yes. All right. And shout out to the whole Essex County and a special shout out to the heat. Thank you. Oh, are you 21? Um, 35. Perfect. You sound like a young girl. <laughs> I mean, you're still a young girl, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. By the way, for you people who have a PayPal account set up, am I saying it right, Art? Yes. Yeah. You know, you can go to PayPal.com and, and press the, the right button and, and, and purchase tickets for the Dons and Divas extravaganza yes, yeah. there, too. You can also go to Dons and, you have to spell it and, A-N-D, Dons and Divas 2005 at Yahoo.com and, and purchase tickets there as well. Did I say that right? You said it right. You did good. I get very nervous with the computer language. Actually, you know, that's an email address. That's an email address, yeah. but they say that there's a button there. You can hit a button and, and purchase tickets. No, that's an email. You send your Dominique from Brownsville is says something oh. to say, Goose. Hold on. Dominique knows better. What you do, it's an email address. You go to Don's, D-O-N-S, and A-N-D, Divas, 2005 at Yahoo.com. You go there. And it's a little thing that you get, a little icon you click on, and you, it, it opens up PayPal, and you could purchase your tickets right there. There you go. Hmm. Brownsville in the building. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Dominique. All right, we're going to continue with the break. We'll, be, we'll do better with the phone calls in the next break. I'm sorry. Steve, where have you been? Steve uh, Steve doesn't know how to do the phones? All right, all right, we got to explain to him behind the scenes. All right, keep it here, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, nonstop till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. Wendy Williams Rock in your station, dropping hits across the whole nation. Wendy Williams Rock in your Can you feel it? Oh. The Wendy Williams experience here on the radio. So where were we? You know, I don't even know where the style network is. It doesn't work on my cable. There, there's something wrong with it. I hate it. You know, Isaac Mizrahi's new talk show. Well, he's going to kick off a new talk show and he's going to have like the big names. You know, everybody loves Isaac Mizrahi. Some of the names he's got lined up are Madonna, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kira Knightley. I think she's cute, Kira Knightley. Anyway, um, the show's called Isaac, and it debuts on the Style Network December 5th at 7 p.m. And I think he's got such a big personality. I can't decide who's got the better personality, Isaac Mizrahi or Michael Kors. I really like the way both of them act. I saw the, the Michael Kors E! True Hollywood Story or something like that one time. The man had me crying. He was raised in Long Island and this whole thing. And, you know, just his story, he had me crying. And it really did end up as one of those happily ever after stories because, you know, he's famous and he's... This just in from Tony Braxton's house. Tony Braxton has put her son Diesel in speech therapy in a bid to help him communicate with his classmates rather than bite them. 
The singer was horrified when she learned about her two-year-old's nasty habit, which led him to getting suspended from summer school. Well, here's her quote, and she explains. I got a note sent home. They gave a warning, and then they said, can you come pick up Diesel? We think he needs to be home for a couple of weeks. Well, a couple of weeks home for a working woman's schedule is like, oh, we want to fight you. And here's Tony. She continues to talk. See, Diesel doesn't speak. He had all kinds of tests. He's not autistic. They said some kids just don't talk until later. So he is in speech therapy. In the school year, he was fine. And in summer class, they have all kids together. The two-year-olds, the three-year-olds, the four-year-olds. So, if they take something from him, he can't say, give it back. So he would bite them. Which is fine, but he started biting the teacher. No, it's not. Today you bite, tomorrow you shoot. No. Keep that little hellion uh, right over there. (laughs) <laughs> no, Tony. Tony's going through it. And this is the last thing she needs. While she's juggling, juggling a CD that... And I love Tony Braxton, but her CD has been met with, what, lukewarm reception? Mm-hmm. It's a good CD, too. Yeah, pull up that song. Pull up that single. Take your name off my list. Take your name off my list. Get your face out my mind. I like that song. And now she's got to deal with this. Do you spank him? Of course. At two years old, why not? Beat him down. Tell him he better start talking and talking up for himself because his name is Diesel. And she already pegged him as a certain kind of bruiser by giving him that name. Mm -hmm. You know what you know what Diesel goes along with? Dumb Diesel. We got to get him in in some help. Now I know, you know, the kids, the kids, uh, you know. And you know Tony. Tony's a total family woman. She's not even thinking about this damn CD right now. She's thinking about her son and Carrie too. He's really hands on. They're they're a lovely couple. They really are. She's got a richness in her life that um, a lot of the a lot of the singers out here today, um, including Beyonce, could only pray for. She's got a richness in her life, a real full life, and a flat stomach. She's got it all. She truly does have it all. She can tell these broads what it's like going through bankruptcy, and you know coming back. Dating everybody from, you know, Bryce Wilson to Curtis Martin, that football player, and not having... She knows, she can tell you what it's like to touch Broadway and get a standing ovation, you know. And when she snatches her weave out, she looks beautiful, even at 30, whatever she is, 35, 36, whatever she is, 37. You know what I mean? She's like every woman. She knows what it's like having a heart problem, fibroids. She knows what it's like to have an implant burst overseas and have to, you know, make the choice. Do I want an overseas quack working on me? Do I want to fly back to the good old U.S. of A. and have it? She flew back here. You know what I mean? Her father and mother in that situation, her crazy sister that went on the the life show with Ion Lavenza. She knows. Plus, she's got that little sister of hers, Tamar Braxton, who I absolutely love. And now this, a biting two-year-old. She's got a full life. The other singers can only wish. And I and I mean that in the best of best of sense. You know, of course Diesel will get over this. I love the name. I love it. Diesel. Yeah. Go ahead, sing, girl. Woo! Take this ring. Let's go to um line number three. Kenny's over there. Hey, Kenny. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Nice to have you here from Springfield Gardens over in Queens. Yeah. I'm glad that you listened to the show. He's only 19, everybody. (laughs) Always listen to the show. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that was me on Martin. Was it? Oh, please. I I, I recorded that episode back in, I believe it was 1991. I was wearing a cross colors orange jacket. 
uh, with some, I think you had like white socks on. I had on, that was my, that's my Suburban. I am from Ocean Township. Yeah. I was wearing leggings from the Gap and white slouchy socks and white Cads. Yes. It's some coat. I thought, I was just thinking Santa Claus. Yeah, well, I got to tell you something. Back then, Kenny... Oh, Miss Wendy was a bit on the heavier side. Yeah. And I did everything I could possibly do to cover. <laughs> and believe me, I wanted to wear all black on Martin to look as thin as I possibly could. But they said you have to wear a color. And I went out and I got that cross colors coat because I thought it fit like a tent. It would cover me nicely. Little did I know I was disguising myself as another round thing, a pumpkin. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but that's... That's the episode with Kim Seals on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw that one. That's the way it was back in the day. Hey, Kenny, I want to thank you for listening to the show. we got to go into the break, though. And we've got Advice Hour coming up next on the Wendy Williams Experience. Thanks. It's Wendy, man. I have a boyfriend. I've been with him for maybe a little over three years. And he's just now telling me that he has a child out there somewhere that may be like five or six years <laughs> Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. Advice I'm having a problem with my fiancé and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm-hmm. everybody welcome to advice hour on the wendy williams experience like i always tell you guys i'm not an expert i'm just a woman who's lived a bit and i mean sometimes it's better to talk with somebody that you don't know directly than speak with your best friend or your mother or your or your boy or whatever so that's what i'm here for and that's why we call this advice hour I give you the best advice I can. I try to put myself in your situation and what I would do. But I'd like to start off Advice Hour with Wendy's Medical Minute. Guess what, ladies? There's something coming to help our sex drives as well. Well, men, this is also for you. But, of course, you still have that little blue pill called Viagra. However, there's a new um, thing being zhuzhed up in the lab. It's a nasal pump. And just one squirt, and oh boy, oh boy. It's a colorless, odorless, super sex brew. And it's called PT-141. They've got to take that lab name off of it and make it something more appealing when it's out here on the market. You know what I mean? But for right now, it's called PT-141. And like I said, it's a nasal inhaler. And they say just one squirt up your nostril. Just one squirt, and you're ready for action. In approximately... 10 minutes, between 10 and 15 minutes, they say. It's pretty good. For ladies, they say, um, you know, in the lab studies that have been done so far, girls who took a whiff um, of this PT-141 experienced genital warming, tingling, and throbbing, followed by a strong desire to have sex. Now, the study is being overseen at a couple of different locations, including... Um, a technology uh, drug maker in New Jersey. And they say from that that drug maker that, um, look, this is a really promising thing. There's a whole arsenal of females out there that are experiencing sexual dysfunction. And so this is great. It's also being studied in Montreal at Concordia University. That's in uh, Quebec, Canada. So up there, they say it could be bigger than Viagra. For men who've taken a whiff of PT-141, they reportedly feel like a like they had a drink from the fountain of youth, if you understand what that is. I don't know what that, that is, but they say, mm-hmm, exactly. Here's one of the guy's quotes. He says, with PT-141, I felt good, not only sexually aroused, I felt younger and more energetic. Another male patient reported, you have the urge and desire... And you get a humming feeling, and you're ready to take off your pants and go. Oh. Well, there's a psychologist who's also overseeing this. Um, this particular psychologist, his name is uh, Michael Perlman. 
Michael Perlman is the director of human sexuality over at uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital. And Michael is one of the advisors on this drug. Now, it's in its trial stages. They're entering the final trial stages, however, before they present it before the Food and Drug Administration for approval. Should it be approved, it will be available to us, John Q. and Jane Q. Public, in about three years. Can you hold off that long? <laughs> Ladies, are you still trying to pop Viagra, waiting for something to happen? Oh, I know. E-pills. They say the e-pills turn you on and turn you up mess up your brain. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what uh, Wendy's Medical Minute is all about today. Thank you. Thank you. Goose, I love at the end when you turn the music up. <laughs> like it's Oprah show or something. <laughs> now let's go to the telephone. On line number one, we have Crystal and she's getting married. She's overwhelmed. She's 23 and her mother is taking over the wedding. Uh, Crystal? Yes. That's what mothers do. But no, like, it's it's not fair, though, because what she's basically doing is she's telling me that it's either I do this, do that, have the wedding here on this time of day, this, that, and the other, or she's not coming. And she's, like, trying to give me ultimatums, and it's getting on my last nerve. And basically, I'm to a point mm. where if that's what she wants, I don't want her there. She's my mom. I love her, but I can't have my wedding for her. She'll She'll be there regardless. I don't think so. Wow. Really? I mean, only you know your mother. Really? I'm, I'm serious. Hey, did, did your mother uh, marry your father? Yeah. Okay, so she's had her big day. Mm-hmm. Are you the oldest daughter? Yeah, I'm her only daughter. Oh, the only daughter, too. Yeah, it's just two uh, of us, me and my brother. Are your parents paying for the wedding? Well, that's another thing. Like, she said she was going to pay for this and pay for that. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, when, you know, I started making my plans, me and my fiance, she started pulling back on things, saying, well this, this, that, and the other, or when, you know, I let her know, like, Ma, the money's due for this, you know, for what need, what's need to be done. Mm-hmm. She'll I understand. tell me, oh, I didn't, you didn't talk to me about that and a oh, whole boy. bunch of other stuff, and, like, it's like she's pulling back on what she said she was going to do, but mind you, I didn't ask her. Are your mom and dad still together? No, they got divorced, but my dad is paying. Your da- he, he told me, you know, if there's something I need him to pay for, he'll pay for it. Okay, do your mom and dad, are they friends? Now they are. Now they are. Okay, good. Listen, you need to have a daddy's girl talk with your father. I did already. And But you need to have a secret one that your mother doesn't know about. Oh, I did. Okay. Which, and I told him not to say anything to her, you know, and he's saying, well, that's my mom. And Well, um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because your mother sounds like one of these kind of mothers that, like you said, if she's not, if it doesn't go her way, then she doesn't want any part of it or she'll slow up the money or whatever. I can't imagine a mother actually going through with these plans. But if all of a sudden, say the final deposit is due the night before and your mother doesn't like the way it's been going down, so she doesn't want to send it, you're going to need your father pretty much ready with an open checkbook. And you're going to have to be a dutiful daughter and not take advantage of your father's pockets. You know what I mean? Yeah, because that's the thing. My fiance and I have already started paying things that my mother said she was going to pay for because I don't want to sit down and wait, you know, wait around for it and it doesn't happen. Hey, Crystal. Crystal. Mm -hmm. This is only one day. You're about (laughs) to start the rest of your life. I know. Don't stress. You got your daddy. I know. Thank God. Do you have a little job yourself? Yeah. And thank God. And and your fiance is willing to kick in a little something or he's he's totally got the honeymoon because a fiance, he's not supposed to pay. Yeah, he's not telling me where we're going though. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, you like it that way. Listen, um, this is your day. Mm -hmm. So the wedding should be your way. There need a few things if you want to bend because she's your mom, fine. But right. most importantly, your your ace is that you got your father and he's got a checkbook. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's true. You stop stressing. When are you getting married? In April. Oh, gosh. It's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. How much is it going to be costing you approximately? Um, so far, we're looking at maybe like 12. Yeah. How many people? Oh, God. It's going to be a lot. We have a big family, he and I. Wow. It's a lot of people. Well, what's that, 200? Maybe. Wow. Maybe more, because we have people coming from overseas, too. <laughs> oh. It's, it's a lot. How special. Well, congratulations, Thank Crystal. Thank you. And can I make a comment real quick? Go ahead, Crystal. Okay, I know she's overrated, but it's Superhead. Do you yeah. know she's a porno chick? Yes. You know? Yes. Because I saw her in one. Yeah, with Mr. Marcus. Yes. Mr. Marcus is going to be at my Dons and Divas, honey. Really? Yes, child. I mean, he's cute, but she's disgusting. Oh, yeah. I want to throw up. Mm. 
And my fiance didn't believe me. He's like, that's not her. I'm like, yeah. Take not only that, but her game is not in her mouth. It's in this. She cheats because she twists. What do you call it? The corkscrew art? Basket uh, weave. The basket weave. Mm-hmm. All yes. like this. This is how you do it, right, Art? Yes, right. <laughs> the basket weave and just a little bit of, you know, knocking on your face up here. She's not ruining her lipstick over it, uh, you know. She's just nasty, though. Mm-hmm. Just looking at, mm, mm-hmm. mm, she needs, that's a bad for her son, but that's a whole other issue. Mm-hmm. You, anyway. got a, you got your mother in this wedding to deal exactly. with. Exactly. Well, I, w- I wish you well, Crystal, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Alrighty, bye. Now, Goose, I think we're going to take it to line number three. SJ is on the phone. A colleague left the, left the job due to another coworker, and now she's feeling funny talking to the other coworker. SJ, that's your rent that has to be paid. SJ, yeah, line number three. All right, you're 36. So, um, explain your story. Basically, it's a boss, and he drove my friend out of here. She's in another agency, but now he comes around and. He doesn't speak to me because he guess he knows that she and I were friends. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I should be cordial with him or not because he addresses a colleague that sits in front of me and he ignores me completely. I can't believe you're calling. You're 36 years old. You know the answer to this. Yes, ma'am. Friend, friend Schmend. <laughs> this is your job. Yeah. Well, when if you, your boss is not speaking to you, you need to be up in your boss's face with a little holiday, you know, uh, card, some flowers, or whatever. You need to start a new friend. Schmend, what? You are, oh, as a matter of fact, to the boss, you act like you're not even friends with her anymore, or or barely speak. In the meantime, you can be friends all you want. Please don't let. First of all, you, were you friends with this girl before you guys started working together? No. Okay. So then, in other words, she's a coworker. Right. And and she's a friend, but how friendly are you now that you're not working in the same building? Oh, got a point. Okay. So now... Andy, thanks for addressing that. But I have one more thing that's really, really important. Yeah. It's tearing me apart. You might want to get your um, your boss, get uh, he or she a token for the holidays. Uh-huh. It's not about the money. What you're trying to do is open up dialogue for communication because it's ridiculous. You're next to be fired. Do you realize that? Exactly. <laughs> Pipe up. Okay, what's your other thing? Okay. Oh, I saw you that day with the Stephen Madden thing. You oh, yeah. Fabulous. How oh, you doing? Oh, thank you. And how you doing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, SJ. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Hello. Hey. One more question, please, Wendy. Uh-huh. Okay. My sister-in-law and I don't get along. She asked me to be part of her wedding day, and she took off with her wedding party and had pictures taken, and she eloped with my brother. So... I paid for the dress. She asked me to be in the ceremony. I haven't gotten the dress, and she has a dress. She claims my brother's going to handle it and pay me back, but now I'm not hearing from neither one of them, and they didn't dare show their face for Thanksgiving, which I'm glad. So should I just write it off as a loss or try to get my money back? Get your money back from your brother and treat her like she's not in the room. She's like a little robot. Whatever she says goes. Wait, this is your, your, you're married to her brother. No, no, no. She's married to my brother. She's married to your brother. Uh huh. Um, I mean, whatever. I mean, they're married people. How often are you around them? My brother lives like 15 minutes away from me. They live in Queens, like five minutes over the bridge. I don't even know their address. Exactly. I mean, what does she matter? She's married to your brother. You be cordial to her. But for the most part, you act like she's not in the room. And make sure that you and she have your own secret language. That language where, don't speak to me. I'm not. Hmm. Would you like some more cake? <laughs> yes, I would. I felt that snatch of the knife. Mm, thanks so much. Yeah, exactly. It's, there's a way to communicate with people without... Uh, and she has like a light skin thing thing because she's Jamaican. She will not even sh- say what part of Jamaica she's from. It's like she's embarrassed. But like she's been working in dust and suds all her life with those grubby hands of hers. Oh, no. Oh, no. And Okay, I have to get off the phone, SJ. <laughs> you really have a lot of issues. Yeah, I do. The main thing is that you get back in with your boss. Mm-hmm. But he's not my immediate boss. And whatever, SJ. <laughs> You're the one who called. You called him your boss. Then that's how I'm rolling. Yes, ma'am. I'll speak to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't call me, ma'am. We are peers. I see you 36 years old. <laughs> she said, yes, ma'am. So um, Tasha's on line number two. Do we have a moment with Tasha? She's 30. Her boy. No, Tasha's gone. No, oh, Tasha hung up. All right. Well, um, Kara's on the phone. And she wants to talk about a crazy lady. Hey, hey, line. Oh, wait, they crossed it out. Crazy Zoe. 
She crushed it out. Okay. Well, now we're down to a minute. So now how about this? I got this list from a new magazine. I love this magazine. It's a cute magazine. It's called Jewel. And I picked it up yesterday, and I came in, and I was crowing about it this morning. It turns out um, my publicist assistant, Nicole, has read Jewel, and Queen of the Interns, Zoe, has read Jewel. So, Jewel Magazine. They have a list in here. What we never want to see on our men. Uh And men, there are 20 things on this list. We love you, and we adore you. But we want to help you preserve your sexiness. So we're going to go into the break. And when we come back, I'll be going back to the phones, but we'll also be reviewing this list for the men. Keep it where you got it, everybody. Wendy, man. You had a caller call in once and ask, how do you not get crack lip when you chief in? Yes. Tell them to roll a filter up in their stuff and they'll be all right. Mm, Thank you. You welcome. I mean, they thank you. The Wendy Williams Experience. (laughs) 7.5 WBLS. Yeah, everybody. Party with a purpose. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Larry Blackman's going to tear it up. He's going to tear it up. Hey, the week before the party with the purpose, I'm not here. I think Trev Hollywood should probably run the Larry Blackman in the best of yeah. uh, for that Friday. Sure. Friday the 16th. Saturday the 17th is our big party with a purpose. Yeah. Maybe put Jaheem in one of the best ofs. You know? Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. Vivian Green. We got to have a whole party with a purpose best of party on Friday the 16th. Sure. Yeah! I didn't, I didn't even think about all that. Yeah! yeah! That's a good idea. Where were you in the hall listening? No, I was right there. Oh. I'm trying to un- unjam the fax machine. Look, we can have a whole party with a purpose. Best of party. Those, best of show, yeah. yeah, best of show. I mean, those people aren't exactly... Larry, Larry Blackman, he dropped a few bombs, I think. Uh, throw a few bomb drops in between, though, too. Who was that? Vivian Green? Vivian Green. Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. And, uh... uh <laughs> Jaheen. No. <laughs> this is a cricket, damn oh, you. <laughs> the interviews are crickets. They're great performers, but, you know. A cricket-worthy show. No, 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 no. <laughs> Throw in some excitement in between. No, no, I will. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're all lovely people. Can you do that, Trevor? You know how to do that? Yeah, come on, man. I'm the king of this. Ooh. Oh, I do too, man. All right. That's good. Okay. It's perfect. Yes. Look who's going to win right now. Maybe you. WBLS welcomes. Who's going to save me? It's time to tell your secrets. It's a thought-provoking true story that's going to make you laugh and cry. Featuring the Wendy Williams experiences. Artie. I mean, Arthur J. Evans. Oh, Arthur J. Evans, yes. They haven't put that. This is already life of the party. Oh, Arthur J. Evans is in that one. Arthur J. Evans. Yes. At Newark Symphony Hall on Saturday, December 10th. Do you want to go? Yes. It's a Saturday. And all the winners will have a meet and greet with me after the show. <laughs> <laughs> He's making up a contest within a contest. There's a meet and greet. What is it? A get right session at the stage door out back? What do you are coming with all kinds of great ideas today. I like you for that. Thank you. <laughs> First the best of show, and now that she's coming up with all ideas. <laughs> a get right cipher at the stage door at the back. <laughs> Granny's invited too. <laughs> all right, so look, caller number. Um, do you just want to, you want to take somebody now on the phone regular? Yeah. All right, well, Goose, you go down, caller number one, caller number two. No, no, this is going to keep somebody. All right, we're, not, we're just going to pick it up. Yeah. The first person on the telephone now wins, and it's you. Hi. Wendy, it's me. Who's that? It's Charlene. I won. Get the hell out of here. You have got to be kidding me. Who's Charlene? I don't know. Wendy, you've got to be kidding me. I won last year, and I didn't get the tickets. Yeah, well, this is for art at, uh, at the Newark Symphony Hall. This is for art at Newark Symphony, the Newark Symphony Hall. What's he doing at Newark Symphony Hall? Okay, next person. Oh, say. 
No, I just... I, 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 you, you're looking for Dons and Divas passes, yes, right? Yes, and the thing is, oh, I won sorry, last year, right. and I no, missed sorry. it by, like, I came too late, so they didn't give me the tickets. I came to the, what's going to call it, to the, you know, the pickup booth at the, like, front. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. We're not even talking about Dons and Divas right now. Understandably, but, you know, you could work it in a second against Dons and Divas, too, Wendy. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, we're see. not even going to give you the play passes. We're going to hang up on you no, now. No, Wendy. Do you want to go see Art? No. Yes, I do. He's brand new I with this acting Artie. thing. I love Artie. Where do you live? I live in Brooklyn. Okay. Do you have a way to get to Newark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, terrific. Are you available on Saturday, December 10th? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a spectacular show. It's called Who's Going to Save Me Now? It's I time to tell your secret. Yay. It's a thought-provoking true story, and it's starring Arthur J. Evans as the gay star. Oh. Is that a gay star? <laughs> he was raped <laughs> when he was six years old by the church pastor. Oh, that yeah. spells gay to me. Ooh, hold on. My, uh, my office mate wants to say hi. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Wendy, I love your show. Thank you. I think you're wonderful. We listen every single day at work, and sometimes we have to turn the radio down when our boss is coming by. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Wait, where is work? Where do you guys work? Oh, I can't say. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. You definitely can't say. Well, I appreciate you listening. Put Charlene back on the okay. phone. All right. All right. Um, this is great. Do you, know what, do you know what time Charlene's tickets are for? Are they for? There, there are two shows going on that day, right? Yes, a 3 o'clock show and an 8, 8 p.m. show. What time? There's a 3 p.m. show and an 8 p.m. Give show. Give it to 3 o'clock. There well, no, I, I don't think you have a choice. Do they have a choice? Well, I'll make sure she gets the, the 3. I'll put it on The there. 3 o'clock show. That's for, Artie. Oh, Go th Artie. this says 3 right up here. It's 3 o'clock hour. Oh, Go 3 o'clock hour. Go oh. Artie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good. All right, Charlene. Wendy, I love you. Thank you, Charlene. We're going to put you on hold and take all your information Thank and you. enjoy yourself seeing art on, Bro I mean, on, um. Not yet. Right around the corner from Broadway in downtown Nork. All right. At, at Nork <laughs> Symphony Hall. All right. All right, hold on a moment. Okay. okay. All right. That's terrific. <laughs> Is there somebody in the other room? I would take it. You don't need to take it. Okay. Just sit down. Okay. I need to be a star, right? Thank you. <laughs> Your hair looks good today. That's why my face looked fuller yesterday. My hair wasn't as big. Oh. Whenever it comes right off of the hairline, it's, an illusion. it's always flatter. Yeah. So the illusion I create is a, a, a slimmer face by making my hair larger. Oh. <laughs> this is second day old hair now. That's hot though. Thanks. Yeah. It's all an optical illusion. Right. Let's talk about Benjamin Rugg and home furniture. Home imports, rather. I'm going to give you the website, stephaniecohen.com. The reason that it's stephaniecohen.com is because Stephanie and her husband, Ben, they own Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. And I have to tell you something. The store is fabulous. I love the way it's decorated. It is wholesale pricing in a retail store. Yes. The furniture is your taste. Your taste in classic, traditional and contemporary furniture. The rug selection is phenomenal. Tom handles the rugs. He is a wonderful man. You bring him a little swatch of something, he'll match it up in a minute. You, you, you want to make a whole new room around a rug? He'll pick the right one. In addition, Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, get this, they have an interior design service. Exactly. Don't you love that? Fix your home up for the holidays. Fix it up for, for Easter. The point is, is that they're there. They're in Secaucus, New Jersey, 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Here's their telephone number, 201-617-9000. 201-617-9000. They are open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, noon to 5 p.m. I redid a guest room at our home with Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. And I have to tell you, I love it. My parents came for Thanksgiving. They fainted. Wow. You know, you got rid of the CCCC Siemens first. I'm like, well, you know, it was for the guest room. You know, it was just a little something I picked up for the guest room. I decided to, you know, take it up a notch. Why should the guests be treated like that? And then I discovered Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. I was like, wow, real furniture for real, you know. You know what I mean? Like, no, nothing, no clapboard glued together, drawers falling all over the place. Cheesy looking bed frame, cheesy night tables. Ah. Mm -mm. Stuff that lasts. Yeah, I want stuff that lasts. I want the good stuff. 
I want Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. And I want it priced right because I'm cheap. And after they finished the guest room, they started here. All of a sudden, they became clients of the radio station, which I love. So now they did Steve Harvey's office. They did my office. They did uh, our general manager, Dion Levingston's office. They're doing Vinnie Brown, our operations manager's office. Can I mean, Are you still homeless? You're still wandering the halls. Your room's not done yet. After Arts Cubicle. Yeah, they're going to do Arts Cubicle? Oh my gosh. I hope so. I mean, just a really fabulous place. They've turned BLS out. Turned it. Go to their website, stephaniecohen.com, and remember the name of the, the store, Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, Secaucus, New Jersey, 20 Meadowlands Parkway, 201-617-9000. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Benny. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Oh. So, it's still advice hour. I mean, I would love to be able to dip to the phone. Is there anybody on line number five waiting? Yes. Okay, great. So, this would be... Um, our friend from Pennsylvania. They've crossed out your name. So you're 24 years old and your girlfriend has a best friend getting out of jail and yeah. you have apprehensions about their friendship. Yeah, because I don't really know, dude. And then, you know, uh -oh. before I was her best friend, you know what I'm saying? I kind of blew my mind when she said, oh, my best friend this, my best friend that. I mean, I thought I was your best friend, but he get ready to come home. It's like, I don't want him to come between us. You know what I mean? I had to cut off all my female friends, so... Even though he's still living in this area, you know what I mean? Why is he mm, and he's just getting out of jail. He's going to be needy. Yeah, he's going to, you know what I'm saying? So, he's he's going to want know. the booty, the money, a place to stay, something to eat. Yeah, I already told her, like, look, nobody, I mean, she know nobody around when I'm not here at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, even when I'm here, I still don't want to do it around because, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't. I totally the, understand. Know, inside jokes and all this and that. Mm -hmm. or you remember this or you remember that. How long have you been with her? Two and a half years. Do you have kids together? Yeah, she's got a 12-year-old son and my stepson now. And I call him my stepson. Yeah, gotta, he's not your stepson. He, you're not married well, to we're, her. We're, well, we're, we're working on that. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. But uh, then we got a, a See, year See, this and is and part of the problem. People play with titles and people take them seriously. Just like she called the jail man her best friend then she called you her best friend. You were like, I thought I was your best friend. You are not his stepfather. You know what I, I mean? Feel you. Yeah, I understand like, that. Like, see, well, the, the whole title thing. It's, now, how old is your is your girlfriend? She's 28. And we got a daughter together. My daughter's a year and a half. Jeez, why does he mention this? Okay, so she's more than your girlfriend. She is your baby's mother yeah. and your girlfriend. You guys have, are, and do you guys live together? Oh, yeah. We've been living together since I'm, well, I moved in with her. Okay, I don't know who dude is. There's no room in your life for him. Exactly. I only heard to have no room. You know what I mean? Because I know it's her friend or whatever, but at the same time. How long know, has he been in jail? He's been down for almost like five years. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And she was 28. She's 28 now. She was 23 then. I don't like it. Neither do I. You know what I'm saying? Like, then she's just telling me, baby, ain't nothing going to change. And we still going to do what we've been doing. Okay, here's what you need to do. Because he doesn't need to know any part of your apprehensions. She needs to feel it. And feel it nice and good. And what you need to do is sit down, turn the TV off, sit down. And you need to have a conversation with her that goes along the lines of, look, I realize he was in your life before I got here. I don't know what kind of mail has been exchanged back and forth. You know, I'm not that insecure type of dude, but put yourself in my situation. Now, this guy is coming home from jail. He's going to need a bunch of stuff, including <laughs> a place to stay, somebody to have sex with, something, something to eat, somebody to go to the movies with, somebody to help him get reacclimated to society. And, get, and guess what, baby? None of the above is you. If, do, it's, not, if, it, it, it's like, I mean, I'm at work from 7 to 3 or 4 or whatever. Oh, my God. And she home all day. And oh, this, my this, God. This, this, this why, doesn't she, why doesn't she work? She does work. She, you know what I mean? She works in what? the evenings, you know, mm -hmm. like every other day, like four days a week. You know okay, what I mean? Okay. Well, so, listen. Um, it, it, look, is it too much for me to say I don't want him in the house when I'm not here? Cause that's, I already told her that. Because that's, that's what I... Like, no, no, but don't talk to her like you're talking to me. Because to me, you're talking like Mr. Nice Guy. You need to put it down. <laughs> I ain't got no problem putting it down. Exactly. And you, you should only have to get... I mean, I'm talking about regarding being nasty on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the nastiest. You need yeah. to put it down to her like a, a strong 8. 
A, 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 a man or a woman, a part. If you put it down correctly the first time, then the mm. second time when you put it down the ten, they should be kissing your behind as you walk out the door and leave the entire situation. You're not having that. Yeah, I just. All right, you understand uh, what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, I appreciate that, Wendy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I thought I was crazy. No, you know you're not saying? crazy, but and you don't want him in the house when you're not there. Yeah, I don't want him around. Already. Even, I when, see the, even when I'm home, I don't want him around. You know uh, hello, mm-hmm. I was gonna take it there, but I was questioning whether I was crazy. Okay, so then we're in agreement. We don't yeah. want him in the house. Period. Period. And the thing is, her mom and her, I mean, they cool. So I don't deal with her mom, so she can go over there. Exactly. And see her, you know exactly. What I mean? So I don't, you know what I mean. And like, when I go over there, I better not seem too comfortable at your mom's house. I don't even deal with her mom, so I mean. Okay, fine. Then they can you know, use the guest room over there go, to have I this. I don't even step foot oh. in her house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but at the same time, okay, I say I don't want them in our house. Okay. And she can say, "Well, I'm going to go tell my mom this and that." Okay. Well, and, fine. And you just watch how defiant she is about this whole situation, and you just watch the situation real careful. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm already on it. All okay. right. Take care. All right. Thanks, one. Bye, hon. We have to go into the break. Yeah. yeah. They got two minutes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I thought I was talking to everybody. <laughs> no. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the remainder of Advice Hour. And men, got that list of those 20 things. We're trying to preserve the sexy. <laughs> By the way, shout out to Puffy. Daddy's rich. Daddy's rich. All right. Um, and shout out to everybody over at Sean John, too. They have their stuff now in Bloomingdale's. Some nice stuff. I mean, the prices are very high. All right, Goose. All right. I got to close the mic. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy Wendy Williams. And advice hour is on, everybody. I got the results from yesterday's Wendy Williams people poll question. Is your holiday gift budget $1,500 or over? Yes or no? 25% of you all said yes. 75% of you all said no. $1,500 $1,500 over. That would be just for the gifts. That doesn't include the food and your outfit and, you know, things like that. It is gifts. $1,500 or over. Um, the 20, 25% of you said yes. 75% of you said no. Here's today's people poll question. Would you marry someone to make them a U.S. citizen? And, of course, there's money involved. I'm not, you know, going to issue a, a particular amount of money because my answer is no no matter what. You know what I mean? Like, like not for a million dollars. There's like some sort of, some sort of trickery. I just don't want to be involved in it. You know, you got to keep up the lie. Like I'm a good liar for you know the first couple of hits. But if you're gonna be keep grilling me, ins, about the same thing for like four years. We're gonna be married before this guy finally becomes. I'm not good with that. I start getting my stories confused and everything. I just not. And I don't want to be. What if I fall in love and I really do want to get married? If I met somebody who said. That they married for U.S. citizenship. You know, they, like Goose, say I meet you at the club. I fall madly in love with you. And you tell me that you're married to Zoe because Zoe's a citizen and you're from Trinidad and she's trying to make you a citizen. But I love you now, Goose. And I want to get married to you. But now you got to go report to Zoe, who you're clearly not having sex with, and that's fine. All of a sudden, Goose, I'm questioning your, I'm questioning your character. Like, why don't you just go to damn immigration? Then you're too complicated for me. And I'm, I'm no longer in love with you. So, Zoe, you can have him. I just wanted the money. Okay. So then you would do it? No. Would you marry somebody for U.S. citizenship? No. I have been um, proposed with that before. Okay. And you said no? Yes. Okay. So the, the question is, would you marry someone to make them a U.S. citizen? To make them. To make them. In other words, you're already the citizen. Would you marry a foreigner to make them a U.S. citizen? And you can go to my website, the Wendy Williams Experience <clears throat> dot com. Now, men, I've got that list of, of um, what we never want to see on you. But first, I wanted to go and address Keith. Keith is 32. And he's seeing someone 11 years his senior and wants to know from me, will it last? Uh, line number four. Hello, Keith. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Well, you know, uh, I have to say 32, 41, you all are both grown adults. Right. Uh, why wouldn't it last? 
Well, I just wanted to, I wanted your opinion because, you know, I know I've been seeing her for about a year and I love her. Oh. And I just don't want love to blind me into okay. a mistake. But, well, here are a few you know, things. We get along real well. I'm a single dad. Yeah. And, you know, point blank, she's done more for me and touched me and my daughter more than my own daughter's mom. Wow. You know? oh, isn't that sweet? And does she have children of her own? Yeah, she has one son. Okay. Now, here's the big question. If you guys uh, were to continue to be in love and go on and get married, do you need to have more children? Uh, damn, that's the same question I was asking. Sometimes I feel like I do it. Oh, gosh. Sometimes I feel like I don't. You see, know, but more more don't than do. Well, see, here's the thing that, that you know that a man's got to reckon with. I mean, you already have your daughter. She's beautiful, the apple of your eye. Clearly, your new lady love gets along with her very well. She's already had her child, no doubt, because she's attracting a younger man. Her snapback must be incredible. No doubt. And she's not trying at 41 years old to risk, and there are risks, of uh, having a child over 40. Right. But uh, I'm, not really, I'm not really too into... That that aspect of it. You just want to know if it's going to last. Well, I don't. I want to I, I know. All right, I look at longevity. I'm not looking at her as a jump off. I'm look when I'm when I'm 50 and she's 60. Am I going to look at her and still feel the same way? Or is Excuse age ever going to affect you? Think I, I or, think. Or am I going to? Or am I going to naturally uh, grow? And you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Am I going to feel the same way about her am I, as I feel now? No, Is well, age ever going to become a fact? Well, you're not going to feel the same way about her as you feel right now. The, the feelings that you have for her now, some of them will subside and, and others, the more important ones, will enhance because you've only been together for a year. And I don't care whether your, your lady love was 32 like you or, or 18 or 41. There's certain feelings that you have right now that will subside. But like as your, as your love grows... Well, you know, I, I, it's hard to explain, Keith, especially when Goose is throwing signs up at me saying that I got to hurry up. All right. But I will say to you, Keith, that if your lady love takes care of herself, her mind stays younger and sharp while still possessing all the wisdom and maturity of an older woman, right. and her body within reason stays desirable, then there right. is no reason that when you're 50 and she's 61 that you still shouldn't want to twist her out something awful. I feel you. And there's, I and there's no reason that she wouldn't be able to twist back. I've been wanting to ask you this for a while. Yes. And I just wanted to say to you, I always wanted to tell you I love you and how you doing? Oh, how you doing? <laughs> so honey. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Keith. But I don't get down like that, though. No, I understand. Everybody oh. always has the urge to say that when we talk. Right. Take care, Keith. You too. Bye-bye. I'm Art. I mean, excuse me, Goose. Not one minute. Three minutes. Because I want to tell men what we don't want to see them in. Affiliates, we need an extra couple of minutes on the break. Maybe they can come back on the other side and find that out. Yeah. That's, that's good broadcasting. <laughs> well, we don't have a guest during the Hour of Truth. Exactly. Exactly. That's what you're saying. But I still want to talk about um, Bill Clinton. He's going through something awful. That's good, but adhere to the disciplines of yeah. broadcasting. Yes. Yes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Overall. <laughs> All right, you all. Damn. Shout out to Melissa on the telephone. Melissa, if you would love to, I would love for you to hold on to line three. Derek, the way you get over a broken heart, it's going to take time, honey. It's going to take a bit of time. And nothing wrong with the next person to distract you, too. Wendy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy uh-huh. is Wendy. The greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams experience. Okay, the first order of business is to get to this list. Shout out to the men. Why is it so cold? It's not just cold in here, it's windy. It is. Do you feel the wind? We have to keep the equipment cool, though, because you have it like hell. <laughs> well, let the equipment burn up. We're freezing. Then it doesn't work anymore. The equipment doesn't talk to crack the mic. Oh. So which is more valuable to the radio station, the personality or the equipment? Right above your head. <laughs> it is right above my head. I'm, if I could just open my umbrella. <laughs> Zoe, can you just um, echo into the office and just um, have somebody send the umbrella in? Okay, Miss Wendy. Thanks, Zoe. That's fabulous. And Art, mm-hmm. can you do, be the one that touches the umbrella to pop it open? Just because whoever touches it is going to get the seven years of bad luck. I'm not touching it. Okay. You know, when you open an umbrella inside, you know. Okay, you're superstitious. Yes. Okay. 
There's a Friday the 13th coming up in January, and trust and believe, I was sitting pondering earlier today, do I take it off? Do I work? Do I take off? Do I work? Friday the 13th of January, yep. Do I take off? Do I work? So finally, I said, no, I'm going to stick to the formula that I always do on, on the Friday the 13th, and that is do exactly what I would normally do, but I don't do anything off the beaten path. See, taking off would be off the beaten path. That's when, you know, I'd walk outside to, you know, get a breath of, you know, fresh air and the deck would collapse or something crazy, you know. So I'm not going to do anything off the beaten path. I'll be working. Look, I got this from this spectacular new magazine. It's called Jewel. I really like it. Shout out to Jewel. Um, what we, it's a black girl magazine, by the way. What we never want to see on our men. And I like their list. Number one, breasts. If you can jiggle it just a little bit, it's time to do some of those pectoral things. Goose arched his back. Oh, I'm sorry, Goose. I'm sorry, Goose. I'm just saying, listen, we never like to see these. Here's the thing. If we know your personality, a lot of us put up with, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I backpedal good? Yeah, you okay. did. Right. 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 Number two, hips. Oh. A voluptuous man is not what we want to see with your breasts and your hips. I'm big Tigger. <laughs> with Big Tigger and that little uh, seemingly gay man in New York. I forgot his name. I always forget his name, but he's black and he wears glasses and you know who you are. You got bigger hips than the old Oprah. Oh. Number three, pimp. Long fingernails. I don't know who told you that's cute, but we don't want to see that, according to Jewel Magazine. And I like their list, so I'm going with this. Girls, if there's anything that you would like to add to this list, feel free at 866-GET-WENDY. Uh, Trev Hollywood is in the other room. Screening calls. <laughs> really? <laughs> Long nails are not cute, and neither is doing cocaine off of them. Oh, or period. Well, that's back in the day. You know, you keep your pinky nail long. That's a signal that you know. Holla at your boy. I got that snow. Or I do the snow. Uh, either way, it's not cute. None of it's cute. Number four, coordinated outfits. Yes, yes. And they spell it out the way um, Bang 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 would say it. Taking pride in your gear is cool. This goes on to say. But when your shorts and shirt and hat and belt are all cut from the same cloth, it's too much, too oh, much. Yes, yes. Number five, kinky chest hair. Oh, yeah, oh, kinky. I don't have a problem with it, quite frankly. Yeah. What about chest hair, period? I can take it or leave it. Mm, even if you can't comb it? I could take If I can't comb the hair on your head, why would I want to even think that you're grooming and perming? You're giving your chest hair creamy nature. See, I don't like anything <laughs> too, too groomalicious. I don't like it too groomalicious. I like that. Not, if it's naughty on your head and you happen to have it on your chest, I want that naughty too. And I want this down here naughty also. And I don't want you to trim it up. Oh. Not even with the clippers? Uh, too groomalicious. Oh. A man is... Supposed to be a man. Right. This is just in my small-minded head. This is in my small-minded head. And by the way, don't you dare go to the plastic surgeon about those loose boobs. Oh. <laughs> that, that, that's a no-no. Let a man be a man. Either go to the gym or develop your personality and your wallet size. <laughs> you know, be funny. No, she's not done yet. No, I'm not finished. I said I have 20. I only went through a five. Jesus could take the whole break. <laughs> Oh, here's number six. We don't want to see our men with relaxers or press and curls. Oh. Although JJ's hair did look good on Good Times, didn't it? When he had the... Uh, no. no. <laughs> and then he had the side part, too. The Duke. <laughs> number seven, hair extensions. Oh, my God. Number eight, tweezed eyebrows. Oh. Number nine, clear polish. I like a buff out. I don't mind a buff out. I've gotten to the point where I can accept that. Go get something done and a buff out. Let me make it nice and shiny. Number 10, do-rags. What? No, are you kidding me? When a man is leaning over you and he's sweating and his shoulders are all big and the do-rag is working and it's the only thing he has on. What? Scratch that, Jewel. Number 11, a prominent gut. 
Goose is bending over. <laughs> Unless you have a great personality, a nice wallet. Number 12, soccer sandals and socks. Yeah, I don't oh, like oh, that. Yeah, I don't oh, like oh. that. And some of you all just think that just because, you know, you got it going on that you can just walk out of the house any old damn way. Number 13, crusty feet. Oh. Yeah, you do it to us, and now we do it to you. Number 14, lip gloss. Oh, excuse me. I, I did, Art, I, I C I rule number nine, clear nail polish. I beg to differ. Your women like the lip gloss. Yes, they do. Do you ever apply it in front of them? I sure do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> number 15, raggedy teeth. Oh. Number 16, dry, ashy lips. Oh. Number 17, overpowering, cheap cologne. Yes. Number 18, a neck roll. Oh, not the neck roll. Number 19, too tight clothes. Oh, oh. no, but I look good mine. Don't even You're your Dolce & Gabbana jeans? Yes. They do look nice, Thank you. Thank you. Number 10, sheer socks. Oh, no, not the sheer socks. Okay. And the thick and thin ones. <laughs> oh, are they thick and thin? Back in the day, the thick lines and the thin. <laughs> thin. <laughs> the thick and thin. Well, Natasha's on line number six, and she wants to add to the never man list. Natasha, yeah. what, what yeah. is your, what's on your list? Hello. Hi, Natasha. What's on your list? Oh, my list was number 14, the greasy lips. Yeah. I can't stand that. <laughs> and Art's got the nerve to reapply in public. Yeah, in public. What's wrong with him? <laughs> that is nasty to have more lip gloss on than me. Isn't that killer? <laughs> it is. It's disgusting. Oh, Natasha, you slay me. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Now, today's people poll question is, uh, would you marry somebody to keep them in the country? Shannon was on line number two, but she hung up. She wanted to comment on it, but I guess her man probably let came me, in the... Huh? Let me check to see if maybe the light has blown. That's very well true. Huh? Shannon? Yes. Hi. There you are. See? Yeah. Broken light. <laughs> Add another thing to the broken list around here. Easy. Broken phone lights. Shannon? Yes. Hi. You wanted to comment on today's people poll question. Would you marry um, a foreign person to keep them in the country? Obviously, there's money involved. We didn't put money on as part Oh, of it. there's money involved. Well, uh, you do it for nothing. Well, that's what we were talking about. I was saying I probably would if it was a friend. And he was flat out honest with me and just said, look, this is the situation I'm in. I need to... You're really nice. My... Well, like I said, if it's a friend. And you're, tw is... and you're 29. Apparently, you don't have any prospects. Um, no, not right Yeah, now. I was going to say, because only an absolutely single woman um, would dare to do something. Ooh, boy. <laughs> if, if it was a friend. How I much... It, you wouldn't ask your friend for money for it? I might. Because <laughs> that's, that's a huge favor. How could you possibly be repaid? I know. It, you, I don't think you can, but like I said, if it was a friend, I, I might, I might consider it and, and do it for the friend. If it was just somebody who I didn't really know. Well, I don't think not. I would at all. No, of course Wouldn't not. Consider it. Yes. Thank or you, Shannon. Was, all right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Wendy. And you can go to the Wendy Williams Experience dot com. As a matter of fact, to answer that people poll question, or you can go to the Wendy Williams Experience dot com to find out more about the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Right, Arthur? You have everything up there. Yes, ma'am. How long before the PayPal button. You can hit the PayPal button and, and buy your tickets on the Wendy Williams Experience the com. are handling that with the webmasters at this point. Okay. But it should be very, very soon. Shout out to everybody in Philly and Delaware. I'm going to give you two seconds to get a pencil and paper. I got a ticket broker out there in the 302. You know, you connect with uh, the ticket broker and you get your tickets for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. I was telling everybody earlier, Art, I don't even think you heard this. Okay. Do the drum roll. I'm going to oh, tell you because this is a big go. deal for you. Yes. Confirmed. Uh oh, stop it. Has to be here, wants to be here. Called and left it on my own private email, uh, voicemail. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Oh, no, not my brethren. I love him. Wait until I tell my friend Lisa Carnegie she is going to die. Yes, yes, Lisa. Oh, she's going to love it. She's coming again to turn it out? Yes, oh, yes, she'll be her. turning it out. Love her. All right, you ready, Philadelphia? 302 250. 6650. Brooklyn, you're next. And then I wanted to tell you guys about Aaron Spelling. And then I wanted to talk about Eddie Murphy. Uh oh. Philadella, are you one more time with the number? For the Dons and Divas Extravaganza, hosted by Mary J. Blige, five hours of open bar, oh. the ultimate grown and sexy affair. By the way, you know what? Shout out to the 40 plus crowd. Because I know how a lot of us can be. A lot of us can be like 40, the new 80. I'm sorry, but you're not invited to my party. I don't know who you think this is. Oh, stop. 
<laughs> you know, we are only peers in the name of number only. Shout out to the 50-year-olds who might have apprehension. If you're 50 like like somebody's mother 50, mm-mm. I know you are somebody's mother, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. You've got to be handling your business. Uh oh Okay. This is, don't, don't get it twisted. This is a grown and sexy party, but it is for youthful, vibrant people who've got a zest for life. If that's not you, then sit this one out. See you at the party with the purpose. Yo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> everything into some damn thing. No, what did you mean? Backpedal a little bit. <laughs> that was control. What I meant, have you ever heard that white boy DJ, DJ Cassidy? Yo, he's done Puffs parties and all that? Yes. Have you ever heard Cassidy put it down? Yes, I have. Okay. It's not, it's, it, I mean, this is the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Oh. It's the black party. The ultimate grown and sexy affair with the ghetto twist. It's sophisticated with that ghetto swagger. It's women and men of a certain age and your kids. <laughs> Depending on how old you were when you had them. It's presented to you by Demetrio Fur and Martel X and O. Tens, tens, tens across the board for the five hour open bar. Oh my gosh, stop it. Mary J. Blige hosting. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Mark, Mark oh, Keisha Cole, oh. and you know, I mean, you know, this the, we got a whole nother situation going on with the celebrities. It's going to be a crazy party. Delaware, Philadelphia, 302 250 6650. Brooklyn, do you know where Elle and John's Barbershop is? They have been handling tickets for the Dons and Divas one, two, three, four, five, and now Dons and Divas part six. Brooklyn, call 718-385-0440. Do you know where Fulani Clothing is, Brooklyn? Okay, you can call them too. 718-789-0464. And Brooklyn, if you see my Jeep rolling through, you know, with the Wendy on the side, knock. Amen. So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't uh, ask me no questions like I'm a child. It, Don't it, ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams wow. Experience. Only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. Can somebody open the, the fax machine and operate that? It's stuck in there. Nobody's hand can reach it. Can you use a pen? We tried. It ripped the paper. A switchblade? It ripped the paper. So the fax machine is ruined. I have screwdrivers and, and stuff in the in the office. But that keeps ripping the paper and the paper's already in there. We can't reach it to pull it out. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> we haven't had faxes in two days. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, no, it's not good. It is not good. <laughs> she said, come on, Steve, let's try. <laughs> oh, it's BLS 107.5. Christmas party with a purpose is shaping up type nice. Vivian Green, Jaheem, mm, Cameo, and Donnell Jones. Plus the food, the booze, and new people. Let's go to line number four. I, I need to talk with her uh, really quick. Cece, are you there? Yeah. Cece, everybody, has no man for the holidays. Oh. And that is exactly what she's calling about. It says here on my computer, no man for the holiday. CC's 36. Is this your first holiday with uh No, I've had, had one from a couple years back. I was broken up with a boyfriend from yeah. February. But he's Asian. I should have known better. He's Asian? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's not anymore? What, is that, what does that have to, um, have to do with you should have known better? I'm still strung up on him. It's hard to get over him. He turned you out. 
Well, are you Asian also? No, I'm black. Mm. I have no children. I have mm. a very good job. Mm -hmm. And how, how long were you with? Um, on and off for four years. When he would leave you, would he go with other Asian girls or would he get with other black girls? No, nah, just, he just stayed with himself. Oh. Are you, that you know of. Right. What would you do when you were off? Would you go with other guys? or No. You just work, go to the gym, and hang out at home. Mm. Like a homebody. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to get desperate. I mean, you know, it's it's... I've never been to a Don's and Divas party in my life. Okay, well, we're not giving away the passes now, if that's what you're calling about. Oh, no. Okay. I, just I saw you that day at Macy's. You look fantastic. I didn't realize you were so small. Thank you. Oh, God. On the bottom, not on the top. <laughs> I feel it. I feel and it better. Art, I want to tell you, is a character. I went up to him. I know he has salt and pepper hair. Yes. He told me he was someone else. I said, are you Art? <laughs> Art and he said, no, that gentleman over there. Why? There was a short fellow, brown skin with locks in his hair. Very sweet. Is that Jay Black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, a purity. No, it's Jay Black. Oh. It's the crew. Yeah, that's part of the crow. Yeah, I felt so bad because you probably remember me. I wanted to give you the Stephen Madden shirt. Because you were stretching it out and trying it out and asked you to sign it for me. I'll be damned. I haven't even worn my... Have you worn yours yet? No. I want to save the signatures of yours and his, but I don't know how. Yeah, you can't, you can't wash it. Damn. Yeah. Oh. Damn, why is it that I can never think that I have a cute shirt like that on days like this when all I want to do is put on some jeans and a t-shirt? Exactly. Here I am with the same stank wife beater. I could have on a really cute... You know, Stephen Madden is one of the sponsors of Don's and Diva's Extravaganza. And I meant to ask him about the wide width boots. Like, I pissed because one of the guards was nasty with me and pushed me out of the way. And I told his boss on him. I ain't seen him for the rest of the night. Some white, tall guy. Mm. Like, Steve Madden gave me two shirts. Oh, nice. One for you and one for... I gave it to the security guard. I think he played me. All right, let, I... let's get back to you, though. Okay. Is your issue that you have nobody for the holidays, so we should play the Boo Boo Face song for you? Yeah. Oh. oh, well, I mean, you, you survived Thanksgiving. What'd you do then? Stay home with the family. Okay, and Christmas is coming, and what will you do? Probably the same thing. And the rest of your relatives are like, Cece, you're 36 years old. When are you going to get married? That's what they all asking me to Damn I'm them. sick of it. Damn them. When are you going to have some kids? I don't have enough money for that right now. I finished college, have my BA, but I'm in a city job. Yeah. And I want to fax you so much, but now your machine's busted, and I don't know if the code for my job will show up on your fax. CC, hold on a moment. Just put CC on hold, Goose, and grab that line. I think that's my food. Just grab it on the private area. I think that's the Chinese food. We can't pick up one line. Is that and Chinese food? Yeah. Is that the Chinese food? Yeah. Shout out to the pink food. room. The, the food is here. How you feel? Uh, how you feel, Cece? <laughs> we ordered on behalf of your ex-boyfriend. Chat not, now line for us, Cece. Cece? 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I say all that to say you're not the only one, Cece. But the thing is, I'm oh. 36 now. Okay. And I'm on the verge of exploring toys. I've never bought anything like that in my life. Well, geez. I don't know. I, the village is the place to be to get these things. So I hear. Yeah, you can get them everywhere. I mean, I'm surprised. But the anal stuff, I don't care for that. Okay. Well, they, there's stores that have a plethora of things. Thank you, Cece. I'm right with you. I'm always thinking about food, too. Yeah. Happy holidays and chin up, Cece. Thanks, Wendy. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Boom, boom, boom. Is this another Benjamin Rugg and Home? All right. Benjamin Rugg and Home Imports. They're located in Secaucus, New Jersey. The address is actually... 20 Meadowlands Parkway. The telephone number is 201-617-9000. I've gotten furniture for my home from them. I've gotten furniture for our office from them. <clears throat> they are clients of this radio station. I would not steer you wrong. I would not send you someplace that I wouldn't dare shop myself. This is a personal endorsement from me to you. Stephanie Cohen and her husband, Ben, are lovely people. They will take care of you. Their prices are wholesale. Their store is retail. They've got stuff from the Martha Stewart Signature Gallery. They're not the cheapy stuff. I'm talking about the good stuff. They've launched the Stephanie Cohen Furniture Line. They've got an incredible selection of wholesale-priced rugs. Beautiful textures. Beautiful patterns. 
beautiful styles, and the colors are rich. Wonderful. The furniture, they've got classic, traditional, and contemporary. I, myself, love the contemporary. Choose your flavor at Benjamin Rug and Home Imports today. Located 20 Meadowlands Parkway, Secaucus, New Jersey. 201-617-9000. Thank you. Where's our where's the bar in the studio? Where's the bar? Because question mark wants to know where the where the stash is. Well here's the problem. Okay. <laughs> There's a little problem with that. The problem is I would like for the beautiful windowsill overlooking Park Avenue and down to the Empire State Building and whatnot to be the bar. But what we need is we need perhaps a table because I think the heat that comes up from the register is gonna warm the liquor and make it bad. Oh yes, yes, you're right. But if you're looking for the bar, open up that liquor bottle that's shaped like a lady with the diva hat. You want that one open? Okay, well, down to divas is around the corner. Excuse me, and I'll be the one to do the opening. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. wait a minute. Wait for me. No. <laughs> because I know exactly what question mark does when he comes here. Uh-oh. It's Wendy with the throwback from way back. For Wendy Williams experience. For Wendy. Hey. 305. This pretty Ricky. What up? This is Omarion. What's up? This your boy Trey Sons. Are you listening to the Queen of All Media, Wendy Williams herself? <laughs> I was just, I was just reminiscing in the studio to myself. I fell asleep at the wheel one time, and the song that was playing when I woke up <laughs> was play that song. Play, play that song again, Goose. Yo, this song was on right here. Just as I woke up, the queen was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and I wake up, I'm over on the shoulder, about to go down like an 80 foot back. <laughs> there he is. That's right where I woke up. That's right where I woke up. That was the wake up. When, there it is. The queen was. <laughs> It was when I was hustling between radio jobs. I was working between New York and Philly and just burning up and down the road all hours of the night trying to get from one job to the next job. And You know what I mean? Fell asleep at the damn wheel. <laughs> I woke up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was the best new port I ever had after that. You ever be, been in a close call and you sit on the side of the road for a minute and blow through a pack real quick? Ooh. Eddie Murphy. It's now in In Touch magazine. Last week, week I was talking about it through the ghetto news, but now listen to this. Eddie Murphy's 12-year marriage ended in August, but he's definitely not sitting home alone. He's dating stunning Access Hollywood host Sean Robinson. The two have been pals since Sean had a cameo in his movie Dr. Doolittle. The pair went public at the Access Hollywood 10th anniversary party on November 10th, where they were spotted holding hands. Well, this is absolutely nuts. I mean, you know, she's trying to come up and get publicity. Go, Sean. I don't blame you. But just recognize what it is. Little gay Steve and I were talking about um, Mariah Carey's new boyfriend. I wanted to expound on that conversation, only I think he went to run an errand. Everybody's got all these relationship issues this time of the year. I mean, you know, I'm expecting it when I go to the phone. You guys are going to want to talk about the ultimate hustler that comes on TV tonight. I'm not watching that. The fax machine's been broken for two days. I have no idea what you guys thought about Dennis Rodman. I only hope that, you know, I did right by the sports lovers as well as the pop culture lovers. I hope I did right by you. And I haven't gotten any feedback because I can't get to the fax machine because the fax machine has been jammed for two full days. Let's go to line number three. Tequila Sunset has a friend cheating, and now Tequila wants to step up and tell her man he's cute. How old are you, Tequila? I'm 25 years old, Miss Wendy, okay? That is such... All right, Miss Honey. Hey, Tequila, that is such a trifling thing to Okay, Miss Wendy, no. Let me, let, me, let me get the story straight, okay? Okay. Okay, give me a chance to defend myself, because you're not even giving me a chance to defend myself. Okay, go ahead, Tequila. Okay, well, okay, the thing is, right... She done called me. I told you yesterday with the story, but I was hyped up because I was driving and I didn't want to get pulled over at the same time. You know what I'm saying, Miss Wendy? But anyways, the point is, she called me and confessed this to me, right? And then I'm supposed to let that weight in on my on myself and carry that on my my shoulders? Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm uh uh-uh. uh. Ooh, child, no. 
That is not happening. So nobody should be friends with anybody. No, I'm, I'm, no, no, Miss Wendy. I'm her friend, and as her friend, I'm doing her a favor because she should not be around with this man trying to pretend that she has a relationship with you out, out on booty calls before I even had my own cup of coffee. This girl was twisted and turning in a whole Wait, in a, Gay Steve, just wait, hold hospital. on a second. I mean, come on, Miss Wendy. Is that lady like at all? No, it's not. It's you know, Kayla. I'm not, I'm not an angel. I mean, we all get down and dirty and do our thing. But like I said yesterday, I hatch the plan first and I stick to it. I don't go calling people, disrespecting them in their job. I got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? And let me tell you, I love my friend. And, and she's hearing me right now. I'm not going to call out her name because I don't want to blow her spot. But hey, t- hey, girl. You know, but anyways, my point is she should know. Don't stop, click, stop playing the sound effects. I'll hear them. Okay, Tequila. Thanks for calling. Happy Love you, Wendy. Love you too. Bye. Steve, I was just telling everybody that we were talking about Mariah Carey's new man. Mm-hmm. Is there an underlying insinuation that we were making because he's close with Benny Medina? Because <gasps> Benny Medina is also a, well... I love Benny. Many men do. Oh. Very, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Oh, no. But, Benny does good business, though. Yes, he does. But Mariah's new man, this music executive, there's... He's big, too. Like, he's been doing big things for a while, too. He's executive producer of the Mimi CD. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but they're close. I heard. Oh, Mariah. You're such a hag. <laughs> oh. She loves it. She does. She does, yeah. Well, hell, if you're going to be with him, you might as well have stayed with Prince Albert. <laughs> oh. That's it. I'm disgusted. <laughs> Are you hearing about the scandal that's rocking Hollywood right now? Aaron Spelling is going through it. And then we're going to talk about 50 Cent. Apparently, there's some sort of sex scandal here. He is 82 years old. The last thing his pacemaker needs is a sex scandal. Well, it's shocking. And if the accusations are true, they say this could turn out to be one of the biggest Hollywood scandals in recent history. Hundreds, they say, of current and former Aaron Spelling employees are now being asked to reveal if they have ever been sexually harassed by Aaron Spelling. Imagine how Tori feels. Here she is, 32 years old. Her father's 82. Um, you know, I'm a, that must, and her, father, her dad's been brought up. Mm, ass. Well, apparently there's there's been multi-page accusations thrown. And now... A list of beauties are being contacted, including Farrah Fawcett, including Heather Locklear, Linda Evans, Joan Collins, Stephanie Powers, Alyssa Milano. All these people have all worked with him. No word on who the actress is saying that who's being sexually harassed or who was. But um, the Globe magazine. Oh, shut up. <laughs> of course I believe it. The Globe magazine has obtained a copy. It's a two-page letter dating from November 11th, and it was sent to um, a particular actress who worked on one of Aaron Spelling's shows. In it, it talks about the unnamed woman, and uh, just, you know what, it all seemed interesting when I was preparing this story to bring to you, but now that I'm bringing it to you, you know, who cares? I mean, it goes on all the time. It's called the casting couch. 82 years old. You know, unfortunately, sexual harassment is still very plausible. That's the one to do it with, though. He can make moves for you. Yeah, he can make moves. Exactly. The one I feel sorry for is Tori Spelling. 32 years old. Your dad's going around harassing girls now younger than you. 22. You know what I'm saying? Because now she's 32. Randy Spelling, the son, is 27. Yeah, hang in there, old man spelling. You and all that money. By the way, I believe it. Wendy, man. I met up with this guy. We were together. We were at his house. And why do you think his thing wouldn't work? Do you think maybe he's... How you doing? The Wendy William. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Watch what you say. That's all, baby girl. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the f*** you say. The Wendy Williams Experience. We're entertaining people in the in the pink room, and so, you know, we're drinking uh, Island Breeze by Bacardi. Have you ever tasted that? Mmm. It's half the calories of traditional uh, spirits. And all the buzz. I mean, taste. Um, 
How you doing? Um, I would love to be able to go to the phone lines. It is really paining me that the fax is not working, but we'll get through. Um, Nicolette Sheridan just celebrated her 42nd birthday, and she bought herself a fabulous $100,000 platinum diamond ring. Yeah, she bought it. Well, you know, she just, from Desperate Housewives, I'm talking about. You know, her engagement is officially off to Nicholas. Uh, supposedly, she was the one who was cheating. So she goes over to Neil Lane, and she buys herself this nice big birthday gift. Good for her. And, by the way, I don't believe for a moment that Pam Anderson is interested in anything other than maybe a roll in the hay with Mark McGrath. And what happened to Patrick Stinson on E? What the hell happened to Patrick Stinson? Who is this new whack-a-mole on there with Juliana? Who is that? I'm telling you, E is getting whacker and whacker by the day. It's been two weeks since the last time I... Three weeks since Patrick Stinson, and I would love to know what's going on. I would love to know, did Patrick quit? Did he get fired? Did he get married and whisked off, you know, to another location? I mean, what's going on? And who was the new whack-a-mole? I refuse to even get to know him, so I don't care. I'm not watching E! News anymore. And believe me, I used to love to, you know, watch E! News, like, on the weekends and stuff. I just can't take it. Oh, boy. So, 50 Cent, everybody. First of all, there's a couple of magazines I want to shout out. Yeah, I mentioned this Jewel magazine earlier. And uh, what's this man's name on the, on the computer? Pets and Pans? Pots and Pans? I have no idea. So we'll put that. <laughs> all right, let's just deal with him now. Number one, line. No Hello, Pots and Pans? Yes. You're a gigolo? Yes, I'm a gigolo. Okay, do do tell. How much do you charge for a professional? All right. First three rounds free. Each additional pair of Tim's a throwback and stuff like that. Yeah, a whack gigolo, too. You don't even want money, cash is king? You want things? Yeah, you know, that's how we do it in the hood. I graduated okay. from, the, from the University of South Ozone Park, Backstreet okay. College of Hood Games. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so things are important initially and then I guess once you get your thing game up then you start asking for straight money but you remember this is part of the reason that Tupac died broke he got a lot of things and things and and never got any money and so therefore you know money was you know on the back burner do you remember Tupac's estate yeah yeah but you know I'm not worried about Tupac because the beef all the time at any time how old are you yes I'm 28 okay and uh, this is a service I felt is very vital to my community and and who do you look like who's famous Kind of. Uh, I would say George Michaels. You're a white boy? No, I'm actually very black. But you got a George Michael look to you. Yes. Hey, listen, I got to tell you something. I'm watching Joey Lawrence last night on, on Half and Half. I wanted to jump through the TV and say, brother, please. Lawrence is looking very, very sexy. And he's got how you're doing all over him for you. Legendary. But he's looking black and sexy, and I'm liking the way, and he, they keep him tanned. Oh. But this is how we do on a thirsty first in Rockwell. You know, we lay. Um, I mean, so you so you do it for things. Wait, tell, tell what your price is again. First three rounds free. Each additional pair of Tim's, a throwback, and stuff like that. Okay, a round would be like when you're with a girl, okay, and you're with her one time. Yeah, and you lay the pipe. You and then you do it again, and then you do it again. Yeah. So you're giving away, like, the best ones for nothing. That fourth one, nobody wants that raggedy, used up. I, I mean, at that point... Ugh. At that point, I'm going to be good anyway. Oh. All right. Well, if this is the best you think you can do. Now, uh, you know, I'm just coming up in the game. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is see if the services are needed up there, you know. Rep for the thirsty first, lay the pipe. Oh, no, down. no. You're talking about are they needed here in the office? Yeah, you know. Oh, no. My girls are really about something. No, yeah, I'm sorry. Know. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm I'm I know. I know they're about something. They need the pipe. Okay. They need the pipe. Jiggle out. Uh, don't take this offensively, but we're going to go speak with uh, line number two now. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> I mean, goodness knows, even if I myself was going to pay for it, it definitely wouldn't be Jiggle from South Ozone Park. It'd be, you know, a discreet service from, you know. <laughs> this is where I miss uh, Dave. 
Dave knew his friend Ken Do. Ken Do was the jump off broker. Ken Do would bring you anything you wanted. You know what I mean? Hey, just Ken Do was just that dude. Hey, Henry. Hey, what's up, Wendy? Am How's I? Now you're 33 years old. Am I reading my computer correctly? You want to know are white people going to be attending the Dons and Divas extravaganza? Right, that's my question. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. It's about the listenership of the show. Right. And all kinds of people listen to this radio program. That's true. As a matter of fact, um, we are going to have, I got a telephone call from some um, some white girls who are associates of this radio program who happen to be, you know, up, upstart models. Right. Very beautiful girls. They happen to be friends of Steve, who's here, you know, our gay Steve intern. And yeah. I happen to know them, too. And um, these, listen, there's a there's a group of us. There's um, and my uh, old roommate's girlfriend is black. Steve, so we always all go out together. So it would be like three black Steve. girls, plus you know, plus my friend who's white, headphones. and me, and then plus maybe like another girl or two. And you know, we always you know we always all go out together. But then you know, me and my friend are thinking, you know, we have you know we love going to all kinds of things. Like, are we going to stick out like sore thumbs? Don't be nervous. Be like, you know, listen. There's going to be a whole lot going on at the Dons and Divas. Gay Steve, tell them. There will be white people there, and there will be sexy white people there. All sexy white people. That's right. And and these girls that um, that me and Steve actually know, and they're coming like they're like, coming ten deep. And not only are they beautiful, but they're bisexual. Nice. <clears throat> I hate to say this because I'm very embarrassed to say this, but it has been requested that they take advantage of the five-hour open bar and then kiss in the middle of the dance floor, smoke Marlboro cigarettes, and and dance like the girls in that video. Mm -hmm. I want to okay, be your sledgehammer. And knowing my friends, it will happen by the first hour. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. See, that five-hour open bar, too, is speaking to me. So, yeah. That's I'm, what I'm right. saying. We're definitely going to go. We're he definitely going to go. Henry, we love you, man. How you doing? No, oh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wendy. Bye, Henry. See you December 22nd. I'll be there. See you then. Okay, bye. Bye. Well, by the way, if you got a PayPal account, everybody, go to paypal.com, and you can pick up your passes. Or you can always dial right into the pink room. We have our Dons and Divas hotline telephone number, which happens to be 212-447-5199. You leave your message, and then we'll get, we'll get at you. I was talking about 50 Cent, though. Now... Neil Long says in Jewel Magazine that, you know, he's a popular guy, he's a good rapper, blah, 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 blah. Any woman associated with him is going to automatically be thrown into the, oh, you're messing around with 50 lump. But that's mostly because it's true. I mean, you know, and I'm not saying you, Neil, but I'm just saying, yeah, in a lot of cases, in most cases, it is true. So in the new In Touch Magazine, oh, shut up, I believe. It says the 50s been juggling, you know, a lot of different women. Joy Bryant, Nia Long, and Megan Good. Now, see, Megan Good just ended her engagement. Didn't I just say Megan Good got married? And she damn sure did. Mm. Is she cheating already? Because she <laughs> married a white boy and she figured she could get away with it. Mm. Mm. Megan Good, you hoe. And Elise Neal, too. Elise Neal, too. Oh, let me talk to Vicky in online three. She wants to talk about the people poll question. The, the people poll question. And you can go to my website. Uh, and it's... Would you marry someone to make them a U.S. citizen? In other words, you're already the citizen. Would you marry somebody, money, no money, whatever, to make them a U.S. citizen? Uh, Vicky? How you doing, Miss Wendy? How are you today? I'm fine. Nice to talk to you. Good. And you too. Go ahead with your... Uh... Well, I met somebody a couple of days ago, and they happen to be getting deported. But I'm interested in the person, and I don't think that they would just marry me just because they want to stay in the country. Like, they can marry anybody. I'm not the only female that this person knows. But I'm kind of failing him already, of course. Hello. Hello. Stop. Okay. They couldn't just marry anybody. They could marry a sucker, fool, in love, lonely, 25-year-old girl with infatuation. Don't take that the wrong way. I'm just trying to put it down because Goose is going to tell me to wind up the conversation in a minute. And Goose is straight from Trinidad with the accent and everything. He's and he, he, he looks like he wants to say something really, really bad. Let her have it, Goose. Listen. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> like, Why would you ruin your life, Vicky? So what's I your mean, interest? 
you know what? Paris Hilton gets married a couple of times. Nicole Richie is married. I mean, why can't I do it? Vicky, they are rich <laughs> girls. Unless you have money, you know what I'm saying? Why would you be throwing away your 25? And not only that, but how do we look at Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie? Not like much. Exactly. So imagine being looked at not like much and being too broke to even dig yourself out of the situation. Don't do it. No? No. <sighs> okay. No, you're out of your mind, Vicky. I mean, it's something to do. I, I it's not. Say, you know what? Going to get a pedicure is something to do. Oh, no. Marrying somebody to keep them in the country because you're mildly interested and because you think that you're so special. No, you're not. They're going to take advantage He's of nice. you. <sighs> so what? There's other nicer guys who actually have citizenship. You're right. And I heard when you said it wasn't a good idea earlier, but I still want you to say it to me personally. Vicky, don't do it. I can't lie to you. I'm still going to think about it because I got feelings for him already. I understand. How long have you known him? <sighs> like four days. Oh, please. <laughs> But I feel something inside. I mean... I bet you do. Have you had sex with him yet? Yes, I have. Is it the best? It's really good. Is he circumcised? Does he have all that... No, he's not. Ew. He's not. And he has a birthmark on it, too. Yeah. Is he big? It's it's reasonable. He does his thing. And I don't really have sex with guys usually. Yeah, I bet you don't. And look, so are you going to move him in with you and stuff? No, I told him he has to keep his own apartment. I live by myself. Uh I take care of myself. Actually, yeah. I work at that place she was at with Steve Madden. I was yeah. looking for you on the camera, but I didn't catch quick. it. He'll be living with her in a minute. And, and his no, name he's not. Him. Please, Vicky. I don't want him to live with me. I enjoy living by myself. Vicky, and he'll have you impregnated within six months. You don't know what you enjoy because you're about to make the biggest mistake of your entire life. You are right now at the crossroads of your life, Vicky, and I hope that you make the right decision my young sister. Well, I'm going to pray about it. So. I put the hard R on it when I'm talking about women in general. Sister. Because we're all sisters in the name of sisterhood. Black, white, Indian, whatever. <sighs> well, make make the right choice, sister. And sister. <laughs> well, I'm going to think about you when I'm thinking about my decision. Because I haven't made up my mind. No. Four days, he's good. Yeah, he's good. I, he's a baby. Good. I don't have any kids. And even though, see, I do want a baby, but I don't want to buy somebody that I don't know. He already knows you. He's known you for four days. Yeah. Yeah. He knows me. Yeah. <laughs> but I really appreciate it. Does he it. give you a professional? Has he given me a professional? Yes. No. But Typical. I've given him Typical one. foreign man. Of course you have. You want to know why? Well, I wanted to do it. It was his birthday. Whatever. And he didn't <laughs> want to do you. Selfish, typical, excuse me, uh, Goose, typical, selfish West Indian man. And I've said it. Now I got to get off the phone. <sighs> All right, Miss Lenny. I appreciate Goodbye, it. Bye, Vicky. Okay, yeah, bye. I, I got to go chew her up. Yeah, what is that with the West Indian men, a goose? They, uh, they, not all West Indian men are like that. You know the stereotype, and you know more than not they live up to it. And all you need is a dumb broad like Vicky. You can get away with never get a, giving a professional. Mm. Four days. Wendy, man. My boyfriend's a slob. When we're in his living space, it's kind of a turn off. And he doesn't empty the garbage, and he never cleans up his room, and there's stuff everywhere. Does he at least change the sheets so that you no. can... The Wendy Williams Experience. Home and your family. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 <laughs> WBLS. We were actually going to do it. It's... Hello? It's BLS 107.5, everybody. And we go... Uh, uh. You know, BLS is proud to present... Um, and be part of the sponsorship of TV 411. It's um, a program that helps you improve your reading, writing, and math skills. And you can do that by watching TV 411, okay? It's Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. It's TV 411. And to find out about all that's going on with WBLS, you can always log on to our website at WBLS.com. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to give away passes for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza at 866-GET-WENDY. But first, I wanted to um, let you know all that I can let you know regarding um, the event. It's going to be on Thursday, December 22nd. It is a black tie party. Um, you cannot get your tickets at Ticketmaster. When I say black tie, what I really mean is black fly, okay? <laughs> I mean, if you want to wear a tux, go ahead, uh, you know... Because I know you can look really... But can you add like a like a, a little twist to it and throw on a hat or, you know, something? This is not an old people's party. This is for the grown and sexy with the ghetto twist. It is legendary for being one of New York's hottest parties. I am proud to say that um, Question Mark Entertainment and Face Down have been throwing these parties um, on my behalf for... Well, I've been back in New York for four years. We've busted off five of these parties... 
This is the sixth one. So it's, you know, and they've been all around. Last year, Borgata Hotel in Atlantic City. Um, the year before that, it was at Capital, which is a beautiful space downtown. They've been at Madison Square Garden. Um, they've been at um, Copacabana. Um, the very first one that we had was at Robert Treat Hotel um, in Newark, New Jersey, which um, I remember you know, Usher came to that one and little Kim, Queen Latifah, Red Man and, and whatnot. Um, the last one that we had, Sierra um, came and she actually performed and... Jeez, you know, I just have such a good time. Lisa Ray hosted the Dons and Divas before. Um, are we doing? Are we going through the process? Okay. Um, mm-mm. more. Um, Lisa Ray, um, Mackay Pfeiffer. Uh, oh, jeez, just a lot, a lot. A lot. I get all foggy when I talk about Dons and Divas because they all, you know what? They all mesh together um, in terms of fabulosity and fun. <clears throat> Grown and sexy. Mary J. Blige is hosting this year. <laughs> Mr. Marcus is coming for those of you who, who love adult films. <laughs> um, I talked to my girl Keisha Coles. Um, anyway, every year the Dons and Divas attracts the sexiest from, you know, all five boroughs and Atlanta, believe it or not, in D.C. and Philly and, of course, New Jersey and Connecticut and why not. And this year, I would love for you to be there. This is your invitation. Um, shout out to our proud sponsors, B&B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey. The Federico family at Courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx, who Bob Federico calls up. He says, Wendy, I got six customers who want tickets for the Dons and Divas. What do I tell them? <laughs> this is Bob calling earlier. He's at the, the dealership up in the Bronx, the Federico um, Courtesy Lincoln Mercury. Um, what is that your way of sabotaging? No, he hit the whole button. I didn't oh, touch it. Okay. Did you? Did you um, it did one right Shout now. out. Okay, I'm I'm talking now. Excuse me. Shout out to Helen at Seagram's. Thank you for sponsoring. Shout out to Demetrio Furs. They're actually presenting. It's um Demetrio Furs and Martel X and O present. You know what the Wendy Williams experience. Um, Dons and Divas Extravaganza, which is great. Shawnee at at caterbyshawnee.com. Ray Zach. Thank you, Ray Zach Supplies. Thank you, Steve Madden. Thank you, LB Graphics. And um, so now, I guess the best thing I can tell you is that you can go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com, to find more information. If you would like to purchase tickets, you can go on the website, and there are a bunch of phone numbers in various boroughs, <clears throat> from Ellen John's Barbershop in Brooklyn to The Heat in Montclair, New Jersey, Black Star Music in Harlem, Hillside Auto Spa, my man Ron over there in Queens, my man Race, DJ Qua in Jersey. They got the tickets in Philadelphia. We got, you know, tickets all over the place. But PayPal.com, go to pay or um, go to Don's and Divas 2005 at yahoo.com and that is where you can email and um, somebody will definitely call you back or email you back or else you can always call right into my office and leave a message at 212 what's Zoe doing? 447 Zoe I'm getting ready to go to the phones 212 I need her to get off the phone (coughs) so they can be freed up for me 212 447 5199 212 447 5199 and now I am looking for, and I'm not going to even say a call number. Let's just go to the phone and see who's there. Because as you can see, this is a very grown and sexy party. And, you know, it, you know whether you're 25, but with a more mature thing about you, you know, donning out or divaing out your situation, or 55, please don't be acting like you're 55, like some old crow up in my damn party. I mean, you know, we'll all be there, God willing, one day. But I'll be damned if I go willingly. We'd be fighting Hi. it the whole way. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Wendy. It's Pauline. How are you? Hi, Pauline. Where are you yes. calling from? East Orange, New Jersey. Okay. Actually, I'm at work right now. Oh, so uh, where are you working? Uh, financial company in Florin Park, New Jersey. Oh. Uh-huh. And what do you do there? Executive assistant. Oh. <laughs> do, you, do you have a boyfriend? I have a husband. Oh. Would you be bringing him if you um, came to Don's and Divas? Sure. He likes to go to nice places, too. Hmm. Is that a problem? Mm-mm. 
You sure? I mean, I have a diva girlfriend I can actually bring because you know what? He's coming with me to um, the party with a purpose. Huh? Yes. Perfect. So he don't have to come to the other one. Can you bring your girlfriend to my party? Of course. Oh, of five, course. Minutes, five hours <laughs> off the ball, honey. <laughs> Make sure you have a car service. <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with bringing your husband or anything like that, but. Well, you yeah, know what? I'll leave it up to my you. My girlfriend would appreciate it more because she's a diva herself. There you go. That's all I'm saying. Is she, sing- <laughs> is she single? Yes, she is. See? Yes, she is. All right. Huh? So I'll see you on December 22nd. Yay! At a secret Thank location. You, yeah, it's going to be at a secret location in Manhattan. It's real cryptic about how you find out where it is and stuff like that. But um, um, congratulations. Thank you. You got your tickets. You're very welcome, Pauline. Yay! And have going- a great day. Say hi to everyone. Hi, Heidi. Oh, you too. Oh, Heidi's your girlfriend? Huh? Is Heidi your girlfriend? No, 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 no. Odette. Oh, Odette's your girlfriend. Okay. Odette's my girlfriend. Hold on, Pauline. We'll take all your information, okay? Okay, great. Thanks. Congratulations to you. Thanks again. And the winning everybody continues here at WBLS. You know, um, money-wise, we um, gave away $107,000 in cash and our $107,000 cash guarantee. The winning is not over. It continues. We have $1,000 every hour, and all you've got to do to qualify um, is to sign up to the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. So this is not going to be one of those things where you, you, know, you call in and you win. There's a little something you have to do before anything, and that is sign up for our WBLS e-news newsletter. And then listen, because um, the winning begins Thursday morning with Steve Harvey at 6 a.m., okay? All righty. Very well, then. Um, we're going to continue with the break. Keep it here. The bonus hour comes up at 6 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. your punching bag, you gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Okay. It's almost time for us to get out of here, everybody. I want to thank my guests. There's nobody for coming in today. No, we didn't have any guests. Yesterday was Dennis Rodman. That was enough. Um... But there are a couple of things that I wanted to leave you with. Um, let me say, I told you we were going to talk about Nicolette Sharon, and I did. Oh, we never talked about Bill Clinton, and we never talked about Miles Davis. This is what I wanted to tell you about Miles Davis, the, the jazz legend. Miles Davis has been dead for at least nine, eight years, I think, Miles Davis. Anyway... He is um, part of the new flux of people being inducted to, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which um, you would have thought he would have been there. But I also didn't realize that the Rock and Roll Hall of that, that the jazz didn't have its own separate, you know, jazz Hall of Fame or something like that. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that's everybody. So have they inducted their first hip hop artist or run DMC in there? No. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? He's being inducted with uh, Leonard Skinner. Oh, what's your name? Little girl. Oh, what's your name? I used to be white. Woo! When I lived in Ocean Township. I know Leonard Skinner. Blondie, Black Sabbath, and the Sex Pistols. They are part of, along with um, the late, great Miles Davis, they're all a part of the induction class of 2006 at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, you know what? And Herb, Herb Alpert, um, I met him years ago. He had the, you know, how you do it? Yeah, like, like lecherous, you know, preferred something tight in 18, you know, young and, you know. Like that. Anyway, that's the impression that he gave me. I don't know. Um, anyway, Herb Alpert... Um, will be receiving in 2006 the Lifetime Achievement Award for the non-performer category. So the ceremony is happening on March 13th. I mean, if you're interested uh, at all, because apparently for the first time, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is offering four pairs of tickets to the induction ceremony. Um, now, I don't know whether this means the people who are who are going to be inducted now can get four pairs of tickets or whether now you can buy four pairs of tickets as opposed to just, you know, two tickets. That's all they sell you, two tickets, because they want it to be so private. You can go to the Rock and Roll, uh, or excuse me, rockhall.com, rockhall.com. 
What's your name? Oh, and this is what I was going to tell you about Bill Clinton. I mean, it's really, it's really a sad situation going on with him. He, uh, yeah, well, they say that he is a shadow of the man that he used to be. He's 59 years old. Oh, wild Bill. They say, um, you know, since he's had that open heart surgery, you know, that, that bypass surgery that he had last year, he's been alarming his friends and family with his, his, um, his attitude. His long time, well, okay, there's this guy, his name is Evan Gar, and Evan is a Washington, D.C. insider, and um, Evan is saying that um, Clinton is now on medication to control his wild mood swings, and Evan's got a website that he, you know, puts everything down on. Believe it or not, it's called chimpstein.com, C-H-I-M-P-S-T-E-I-N, chimpstein.com. He says that... Um, the ex pres is taking antidepressants, and he's also revealed information that he, that comes, he says, directly from um, a psychiatric colleague to Bill Clinton's physician. So the insiders are talking. We've seen some serious changes in him once his surgery, um, and we're very concerned. No matter what people do to boost his spirits, he continues to sink deeper into gloom. He had this four-hour open-heart bypass surgery back in 2004. Um, they say, the medical ex- experts, that is, say that 30% of heart, pa- heart surgery patients suffer postpartum, post-operative, excuse me, depression. And he, they're saying old electric bill is a very rare person in the room. Wow. Nowadays, what you have is a very glum man. They say he used to be able to handle crisis after crisis. Now even the smallest thing is too much for him. The fact is he's still not handling stress very well. He only really lights up when he sees Chelsea. Oh. Mm-mm-mm. So handsome looking and virile. His hair is still beautiful. I wish he would go to... Um, Use some kind of bronzer, though. You know, he's he's very pasty, and when he's not pasty, he's bright red. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible, Wild Bill. Mm mm mm. That's sad, you guys. Hmm. First black president. Mm hmm. But the way he treated treated Hillary. You know why um, he's feeling the way he's feeling. Wow. Ain't no good gonna come to you. <laughs> mm. How you doing, Hillary? Ashanti. Ashanti. Sitting in the magazine, her closet. Full of designer clothes. She says that she's got inexpensive sneakers all the way up to, you know, a couple thousand dollars for some boots. This is her closet at their, at the, um, I guess this is her parents, Glen Cove, um, New York house. And she shares her house still. Oh, come on. You know, she's got the, I'm a big girl now, jump off pad in the city, but (laughs) they're playing it like she's still a little girl. They say she shares the house with her mother, her father, her sister, Kenesha. And she admits that her closet doesn't always look so clean he she says sometimes things are all over the place but she's given us a private glimpse in um in touch magazine she says she loves shoes and most girls do and again ashanti you look like you've got really nice you know narrow i love shoes feet you know what i love shoes feet are don't you that's an easy size eight size eight to me is the perfect size foot like you size six Ah, that's Barbie doll feet. You have as much trouble finding a size 6 as you do finding a size 12. Do you wear a size 6 foot? No, my feet are size 8. Oh. Size 6. The shoes always look so cute. Have you seen Melissa Joan Hart, Sabrina the Teenage Witch? She was never much of a looker. It takes a whole lot to get her to look good. She's really, really big and pregnant right now. And if you thought that her chin was a mess in the beginning, just... Just look look at her. Her chin looks crazy. Well, she's always looked like the missing link um, spears. She always looks like, like one of the spears to me. But that chin, do you see her chin? She's got a PWT chin. 
Yeah, she does. <laughs> oh, you all, I love you for listening. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you find time in your schedule, I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Okay, bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Good night. Program complete. How you doing? <laughs> well, the thing is, is that, um, and shout out to my people at LB Graphics in the city. I see you killers. Um, the thing is, is that I'm very, very sorry if I haven't acknowledged any faxes today. It's so late in the day. I would give you the fax machine in the sales department only. <sighs> you guys aren't interested in faxing at 10 minutes to 7, 6. So we'll just keep the phone lines open. 866 get Wendy. Well, we can talk to you about whatever. I mean, whatever you have going on in your world. In the meantime, I got some stories. I have shopping tips from Isaac Mizrahi. Top 10 fabulous fas- uh, fabulous holiday gifts. Um, I wanted to talk with you about... Mm, a little something James Brown is up to. Oh, boy. Who we'll makes something up? 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. A struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that where? Back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40-something-year-old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Hey, everybody. Man, I'm just looking over this menu at the Laugh Factory. (laughs) Man, listen. I mean, the Laugh Factory, the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience every Wednesday night, tomorrow night. um, I'll see you all there. Oh, by the way, from 6 to 8, we're having our model search. We are looking for beautiful women to um, add ambiance to the Dons and Divas extravaganza. What'd you say? Are you doing this when? Wednesday, tomorrow. Between 6 and 8. You're the one who gave me the schedule. No, I said Thursday. Thursday between 6 and 8? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's Thursday, I'm sorry. Between 6 and 8. Beautiful women to add atmosphere. It's going to be at the Laugh Factory. Between 6 and 8 p.m. Of course, that means you'd come to the party and you wouldn't be bringing a date. You'd be, you know, working that night. Work it, girl. Work it, work it, work it, work it. So if that's you, you'd be at the Laugh Factory, 42nd Street and 8th Avenue between 6 and 8 on Thursday. But Wednesday, what I was um, originally talking about, I'm looking over this menu. Look, spinach and artichoke dip with crispy tortilla chips. Mozzarella sticks. Oh, that'll bind you. <laughs> Vegetable and chicken spring rolls. California rolls. Mm-mm. Not with the basket of American fries and onion rings and zucchini fries. Mm, nachos, calamari. Cheeseburgers, pizza, buffalo wings, chicken tenders, ch- grilled chicken sandwiches. Mm. Shout out to all of our Jewish friends. There's kosher chicken and kosher turkey dogs and kosher pigs in the blanket. Dessert, carrot cake, New York cheesecake, and chocolate mousse. Mm. They even offer Irish coffee, Mexican coffee, Italian coffee, and cappuccino. Mm, let's not even talk about the mixed drinks, all the martinis and champagne, the Remy Martin and whatnot. 
Yeah, for the the year and a few months that we've had the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience on Wednesdays, the kitchen to the Laugh Factory has never been working at all. <laughs> that I mean, I mean, the Negroidian buffet that we've been having has been an outside you know, entity, you know how you know brought in. With the sternos in the back and already the food already made, you know, over in Jersey. They bring the food in on big carts and they... With the warmers. Yeah, with the warmers. Now, though, we don't need that. We've got a full-blown kitchen in the Laugh Factory. So, I'm just letting you know that along with the laughs and the drinks, don't forget to tip your waitress. Because she's serving up the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Wednesday nights. Yeah. Are people still on hold? Any, is there anybody on hold? Line one? That would be April. She's in Delaware. She, Hello. Hi, April. So I see on the computer you were once an exotic dancer, and you want to know if you should tell your current boyfriend. Wow. No, Wendy. This is Christine from Yeshiva University. You know I don't have a boyfriend. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the old... Um, I'm sorry. That's the old computer screen. That's okay. How are you? Hey, Christine. Oh, you wanted to talk about... I see here on the computer, Joey Lawrence. Oh, oh Wendy. It was. I thought it was just me. No, I watched last night half and half. I'm oh. looking. I'm like, look at Joey. Said, he really grew up. And he's looking black and good. And you know. You know I favor the ladies. But I still have taste. He looks really great. Exactly, Christine. And I'm going to tell you, you know who he looks a little bit like? He looks a little bit like uh, Wentworth. No. Uh, he, he's got the hair, that buzz cut like Wentworth and is a full-blown, and that tan. Nice, nice. Oh. This is great for him. This is great. This is the best thing he's ever done. He's far from, whoa. Uh, exactly. This is <laughs> wow. the best look. I'm very impressed. Me too. Oh, when are you getting your fax machine fixed? This is awful. I know. You know, I have no idea. You know, that was one of the things that I meant to cover today. I got to the radio today, like 9 o'clock this morning. There were there's so many different things I wanted to do business-wise. I just said, you know, let me just take my son to school and go right to the radio station. Yeah. And the one thing I didn't accomplish, I never talked to Lourdes about, we just need a new fax machine. We can no longer fix the fax machine that's there. Well, we, you know, paper clips and tape and everything else. After a while, you just got to break down and buy one. Exactly. And, and we, ha we need a new fax machine here for the jocks. Really? You guys are getting new furniture and everything else. You might as well have a fax machine. Every, I know. How are you? Oh, Wendy, I love you. I'm so happy to hear you. Wendy, Wendy. I'm like, wow, it's just not going through. And it's all caught. Yeah, exactly. So when they finally fix the fax machine, I'm going to have two days of faxes pouring out onto the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah. You will. At least 15 of them will be for me. Sorry. It's going to look stalkerish, but really, I just I just don't give up. That's all. Yeah, you know. Hey, what year are you? What do you do over at Yeshiva? I'm a secretary here. Well, office manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you Jewish? <laughs> no, but everybody <sighs> asked me. But I passed during that interview. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh. I worked it. <laughs> oh. What's your last name? Is it one of those uh, Jewy names? <laughs> no, Alara Cuente. When they asked me my background, I said, well, my name is from Spain. They didn't ask me that deep. Otherwise, I would have said my dad's Guyanese, my mother's Puerto Rican. I'm island. Hey, listen, is John Larroquette then that's the same name as you? Except no, his name's a little different. Uh his name's a little different. Huh? We have to go see you at the Laugh Factory. I was there with my girlfriend, Wendy, and we saw you, and she kept saying, go, go talk, go talk. I was like, no, I can't. Just say hi. No, 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 I can't. I, I chickened out. Oh, Christine. I know. I know. I just wouldn't know what to say to you. I speak to you on the phone all the time. I'd have no idea what to say. Well, I, you know, how you doing? Yeah, I would probably be like, hey, Wendy, you're in some weird spam. <laughs> But that's that's a good opening line. You say how you doing, it makes everybody laugh. And then yes, once you start true. laughing, then, you know, everything else falls out. Christine, I want to thank you for calling. Of course. And thank you for listening Have and supporting. Have an excellent weekend. All right. Thank That's you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, just like the lesbians, celebrating the weekend. It's only Tuesday. How you doing? Always wanting to party. I'm just playing. <laughs> Saturday, by the way, is the big um, gay men's health crisis dance -a-thon. So, you know, shout out to everybody who's going to be over at Manhattan Center. Um, my assigned time to be there is between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. If I'm having a great time, I'll be there a little bit later. I really have the babysitter on deck, though, from 6 to 10. Just because I figure, you know, give me a moment to get through the traffic and stuff. But I could always call her. She's one of our interns. Yeah. So I can call her and say, look, can you, you know, stay a little bit longer? And Kev likes her. Yeah, my son, he really oh, likes Risha. her. Oh, yeah, yeah Risha, yeah. She looks like Halle Berry. 
Well, on line two is um, China from Queens. She's hey. 26. Hey, China. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. And I see here you have a question on an old blind item with a black actress going on auditions with her child, bad mouthing other actors. Yeah. Okay. And what is your question regarding that? That the question I want to know: Did she ever reveal that blonde item? No, uh, Panache, Myra Panache never reveals, and it makes me mad with you, Myra. Like I love you, but uh, can you at least start to give us five? If you give us five, all right, hell, give us ten choices. That way, it's really blinded. If right. I if I have ten choices, I could say the ten choices on the radio. Then we know what we're dealing with. Uh, who am I speaking to now? Well, Zoe. <laughs> Oh, this is Zoe? Uh-huh. Hey, Zoe. I know y'all must be having so much fun up there. Yeah, Miss Wendy's really nice. Wendy is crazy. Let me tell you, the bonus hours a love-hate relationship for me. Why? I used to start my work at, in my, like, do my cooking and cleaning after 6. Uh-huh. Now I don't do it till after 7. I'm like an hour behind. I'm up all night cleaning, cooking. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't miss them more. If I wash the dishes, oh, I think I missed something. <laughs> I run back into my room. It's sickening. <laughs> oh, okay. If y'all, I want to know so bad. For some reason, nobody thinks it's near long, but I have a feeling it's her. That's you know how the type who you think wouldn't do something? I've heard Miss Wendy say Nia Long could possibly be the one. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 All right, guys. I guess I'm not going to be on the air. I think of something else good. Well, what's your last name, China? Oh, I don't want to give that out. I'm nervous. Well, how do your friends know that it's you if we were to give you They're going to know it's me. All right. But wait a minute. I didn't ask. I'm going to be on the air? No, we're going to hang up now. Oh. Yep. Yeah. They would know it's me. Everybody know I love Wendy. We go to work. We discuss Wendy. Oh. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Where do you work? What, 911, believe it or not. Wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, China, have a wonderful night. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> China, China's friends are going to be calling her. You stupid, you're on. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, line number seven, Vanessa's in the Bronx. She's 47 years old. She's going to bring a blind lady to the Laugh Factory. Uh, Vanessa? Yes. Did you just tell people how old I was? Well, you told... Uh <laughs> you told Stephanie? You know what? I'm proud of it. And in those 47 years, I had six years of bliss with my beautiful husband, Oliver. Oh, so that's okay. They're wonderful. I showed you a picture of him. I don't. You probably don't remember. You have so many people, you know, coming to have you sign books. But well, no, no. You are going to bring a blind woman tomorrow night. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to bring her, and I just wanted to make sure you were going to be there because she really wants to meet you. Oh yes, I'll be there. She really wants to meet you, and just because she's blind or disabled, it doesn't mean she can't get out and have a good time. You know? Right. Sure. Why? Sure. She can still drop it like it's hot. Okay. <laughs> as long as somebody's holding her arm to help her get it back up. Yeah, that'll be me holding her arm how you do it guys. you know what i'm saying <laughs> look at vanessa and her blind lover <laughs> but you know what it's okay because at the end of the day if i could bring joy to just one person the Absolutely. way you bring joy to millions it's okay oh thank you so much vanessa and i'll i'll talk to you tomorrow night at the laugh factory definitely child you can't miss me yeah and you can't miss me i sit to the right of the stage when you face the stage i'm on the right side oh i know where you sit honey remember i came over to you and showed you my husband exactly picture? well I, I vaguely remember because you asked me about your blind friend at that time. Right. Yes, I, I remember our conversation. And she's going to hear us on the radio, and Lord have mercy. Well, there she goes. What's her name? Her name is Juanita. All right. Hi. Hey, Juanita. And she's fly. How you know? Hey. Right. Feel me tomorrow night. All right, honey. All right. Bye. Bye. Juanita coming over to somebody feeling on their own. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, the people poll question today. Okay, so a lot of people are polling. Uh, they want to comment about this. Would you marry someone to make them a U.S. citizen? Now, let me just set up the scenario, and I'll tell you. You can go to my website um, at the Wendy Williams Explorer dot com. I got to tell you something. This Bacardi Island Breeze is delicious. <laughs> Hollywood, you uh, want some? Yeah, of course. Okay, you might have to. Um, Go back to the office and get a cup or something. I, well, I say I don't want you to drink it from the head because unless you're going to finish the rest of the bottle, I don't want your single man funky spunk <laughs> you know, all, all in my uh, Kool-Aid. I'll get some cups. There you go. Shout out to whoever's in the um, pink room, one of the interns or somebody. Can you bring one cup? You can look in my file and cabinet just this one time. 
in the top um, shelf and just bring one cup for Mr. Trevor. <laughs> so the question, and then let's go to uh, line number six. Michelle is 35. She's in Queens. Now, my whole thing, Michelle, is, is okay, you're already the U.S. citizen. Yeah. And, of course, you know, there's a little bit of money on the table, whether it's 10000 whether it's 50000 The point is, would you marry someone to make them a U.S. citizen? Now, this is not predicated on love. We're talking about to make them a citizen. You make a little bit of money. You go ahead. Okay, first of all, number one, uh -oh. I was married to um, an immigrant from Africa. Okay. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know those sound effects, but anyway, I was married to an African, and he he played a good game. Ooh, go ahead. And um, I must admit, just like the twenty five year old, uh -huh. he um, I mean, I was as naive just as she was. See, but I caught on very quick. See, and I had started his papers and everything, and I just called immigration and told them the whole deal. And they stopped the papers, and I kicked them out. All right. So this is before you were married, right? The paperwork had started. So immigrant. So you didn't get in trouble with immigration. Of course not. You just, you just acted, I didn't know that's why he what he wanted. Right. You just acted. Oh, Dominican from Brownsville with the cop. All right. Yeah. So um, thanks, Dominique. I just Brownsville I just wrote represent. Them. Hello. Go ahead. Okay, I wrote them. And I explained the whole situation. Uh huh. And I um, rescinded the paper. Good. And now, was he all mad? I'm sorry? Was he mad at you? Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I bet he was. <laughs> Get a pop in. There you go. Thanks, Queen. All Demon. right. I can't. Listen, how much you got to talk how, a little louder. How much was he going to give you? Nothing. Wow. I how, married him for love. Wait, how old were you at the time? I was 30. But you thought it was love, but he was using you. Well, he didn't say that's what he wanted, but when I read through the line. And he was from St. Vincent. No, he was from Africa. Oh, excuse me, Africa. Oh, wait, yes. okay. And this I already stopped playing that song. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. Artie's not here. That's Hollywood. Uh, and say hi to Goose. Hey. hey Goose. Yeah, but... On the rail, yep, that's what he wanted, and you just have to read between the lines. Yeah, yeah. If a man asks you more than once about his green card, let him get to the stepping. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Michelle. You are welcome. Have a wonderful day. And I love you, Wendy. Thank you, Michelle. I you know what you do to me, Wendy? What? Uh -oh. You almost let me meet an accident day after day after day. It's <laughs> not good. <laughs> bye, Wendy. Thank you, Michelle. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye. Okay, let's go to line number two. Uh, Tamara is there, and she's 20-something. She's not going to give her full age, but she says that she will marry someone for money, not for a green card. Wait, oh, for, I guess, Michelle, I mean Tamara? Yeah, hi. Okay, that means you would marry somebody to get them, make them a U.S. citizen for money. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, so long as they don't have to live in the same house as me, I absolutely don't mind doing that. Mm hmm Especially right now. I could use 10000 bucks if anybody wants to give it up, you know. But don't you have to stay at Goose? You're, you're um, uh, from Trinidad. Uh, do, you, do you know how long people have to stay married and before I they... I have no idea. They, gotta, just, they just got to be here for five years. In some cases, it's instant. Um, you know. Wait, Zoe, Zoe says you have to remain married for three years. You have to keep up the charade for three years. So in a Not three... really. Yeah, no, Not yes, because... really. No, Zoe knows. Yeah, I do, too. I'm in the military, and um, I know some people that do that, and um, I'm also from Trinidad, hi, Goose. And, um, you know, it, it, there's no men to, uh, I don't, maybe they change the laws, I guess, but, you know, I know people who don't have to stay married for three years yeah. just to get it done. You know, you get married, you show up, and it all depends on when they're processing green cards. They, right. they have their the times that they do it and all right. it's whenever your number comes up. Well, thanks, Tamara. Tamara, let's go to so, line number three because um, uh, somebody named Even is on the phone from Brooklyn and 25 wants to comment about marrying someone to make them a U.S. citizen. Go ahead, Even. Okay. Miss uh -oh. Wendy, I have to tell you, for one thing, a uh -oh. friend of mine had that same issue and she married her Bayesian boyfriend. Okay. You know, that she's been knowing for about two years prior mm -hmm. and after that 
you know, everything went downhill. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a baby, mm -hmm. you know, they had problems with paying the rent and everything mm -hmm. and trying to keep up with bills. And, you know, he didn't work. He literally stayed in the house. Why did she have a baby with him? She, she ended up falling in love with him. She ended well, she, 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 okay, she was infatuated with him. Because you know how West Indians are. They, they, come, they come at you with all the style and yes. swagger. And, you know, she was just really, she was infatuated with him. I wouldn't say it was love. Yeah. I would say more infatuation. And then, you know, he, they ended up getting like a quickie marriage. Mm. Because he was, he was illegal and he needed his, you know, his papers and he promised her the world, when I get my papers, I'm going to do this, I'm going to yes, do that, I'm going to take care yes. of you. They set up in the house for three years. Wow. You know, so all these girls that, you know, are, you know, are alone and they feel, you know, hopeless and helpless and they meet these guys that, you know, are from abroad, you know, you need to tell them, listen, no, you don't want to get stuck with a three year deadbeat. Exactly. It's not cute. Thank you, Even. Let's go to line number five. Stephanie's there in the Bronx. She's 40. She wants to know about Don's and Divas uh, tickets. Hi, Steph. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing well. Wow, you sound so um, young in the voice. Do I? Yes, you sound like <laughs> oh, six. good. About 16. Wow, I'm 40. Yeah, I see on the computer. Wow. Wow. Yes, I am. What do you have, a young boyfriend or something? Uh, a young girlfriend? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Do you have a young boyfriend? Well, listen, I'm bisexual. Okay. I do both. Oh, oh I, uh, that's, yeah, I'll keep you young. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> All that running around. So what So what are you, what are you currently getting... Well, I do it safely, though. I run around, but I do it safely. Yeah, so what are you currently getting done by? A, ma a man or a woman? Well, right now I'm with a man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, but he won't be coming with me to the Dawson and Jeeves if I want some tickets. I want to come solo. Wow, so all you wow. want is a ticket. Listen, I only want one of them. <laughs> <That's the first. laughs> if I want to come and just look and see. Uh-uh, there was a lady from the 551 five, area code. I don't know what that is. But uh, five five one, and she said, "All I need is one ticket." <laughs> she said, "I'm all I need is one," and I heard it on the answering machine in the office. All I need is one ticket. Listen, <laughs> I don't shop. need to bring nobody. I like to meet new people, make new friends, and just have a good time. I, you know what? I so wish I was this adventurous when I was a single woman. That's the, you know, if I do have a regret about singledom is is that I, I uh, was not adventure. I wasn't confident enough at that time to be adventurous enough to go out and meet not just new men because that's an obvious, but new women too, and and venture into new like sister girlfriend circles and stuff like that. And yeah, that is so easy to do if you you have just a bit of confidence and you throw on a little something nice and you go out by yourself. And, the, and you just act like a lady and, and treat yourself like a lady and everything. And, and, and you're going to have a good time. Because other people read your aura and they immediately yes. want to invite you into their circle. And I sense yes. that now. Like, like oftentimes, like if I have business meetings or something like that, I'll get there a bit early purposely, like to the restaurant or whatever, to see what uh -huh. kind of action I'm fielding. You know? Yes. And if I was to single... See what, to just see what's going on and how, to, how other people act. And so you know how to carry yourself in each situation. Yeah. But yes. I'm not giving away any passes right now. I just gave some away um, a little bit earlier. But I can give you uh, let's see, you're in the Bronx. Yes. That means that you would like a Harlem location maybe to pick up your ticket. Yes. yes. Okay, have you ever heard of Black Star Music? No, but if you give me the address, I can find it. I'll do better. I'll give you the telephone number. Um, dude's name is Pop. And Pop. It's, up, it, it's up in Harlem. Uh-huh. 212. Okay. Two, one, two. Yes. Two, three, four. Three, three, four. No, woman, you're listening like you're 40. Look. <laughs> my phone is beeping in, and I don't want to answer it, so I'm missing look, me. Look at me, look at me. Two, three, four. Okay, two, three, four. Six, two, four, four. Six, two, four, four. Two, three, four. <laughs> Did I hear a slur? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, and, and so Stephanie, I'll see you on December 22nd. Five hours of open bar. Sounds like it's right up your alley. <laughs> yes, it is. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Steph. Okay, bye-bye. Bye -bye. My girlfriend, Lisa, like sometimes I'll be her go-to person when she's out by herself. She'll go like you know, to a local watering hole that has, you know, good food, but also a really nice bar area, you know, nice big maple bar and you know plenty of handsome men you know you know like a little happy hour thing or whatever 
And every once in a while, like when I'm driving home from work, you know, I get off at 7 o'clock. Ring, it'll be Lisa. She's, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm driving home from work. What are you doing? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm over at, you know, you know, Joe's Pub or wherever she is, you know, having my cheeseburger. She, she enjoys, she'll eat her dinner at the bar. Now, we're both the same age now. Neither one of us would have done something like this when we were younger. Now I don't, you know, marry. But, but Lisa's single. And so I live that life vicariously through her. And I just think it sounds partially glamorous, 100% adventurous, and really just a single woman taking control of her situation. You know, her girlfriends are busy. She wants a cheeseburger. She doesn't want to order out. And no, she doesn't feel like sitting in her uh, condo and eating. So she grabs the keys for a little hot rod and goes, you know, to the local watering hole where the men are handsome and the drinks are tall. And instead of sitting at a table with a Cosmo magazine, she sits at the bar. And anytime there's a little slump in conversation, she needs to seem like the good time girl. She calls me. I never even have to ask, why are you laughing so hard like you're throwing your head back someplace? And she'll say, because I am. I'm making eye contact right now. So if all of a sudden I hang up on you, you'll know why. You know, you know, you can tell when you're friends. If you're friends, if you're dear heart friends, you know the phony baloney laugh. <laughs> Why are you laughing so loud and throwing your head back? What are you out uh, cruising? She's like, yes, yes. How did you know? I had such a long day at the office. Oh, gosh. The paperwork is... Un- and I gave a presentation. Oh, girl. I've just had a long day. So to the man across the bar from her, you know, she's like this uh, very available, you know, working woman about town, adventurous, throwing. And she's saying, oh, girl. So clearly she's not talking to like her man or something, but she's a good time girl. She happens to have girlfriends, but she wants. Anyway, I love that. Cheers to you, single women. And 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 when you roam alone, I think that that's very, very adventurous and brave. I admire that. I admire that. I mean, I would like to get off this topic and talk about other things, but you all enjoy it. So do, you, do you mind if I go with it? Doris is on line number seven. We can learn a lot from her. She's 67 Hello. years old. Hi, Doris. Hi, Doris. How are you today, darling? I am good. Good. So now yes, I, I, you are so wonderful. Well, thank you, Doris. Yes. What? I wanted to comment on the men who are players. Okay. I'm a long distance truck driver. I, wait, 18 wheeler. Oh. And I weigh 120 pounds, but I drive my rig. Wow. And wow. I tried to tell my sister about this guy mm-hmm. that she was married. He was going to give her $10,000. Oh, a green card situation. Right. Mm-hmm. But she wouldn't listen. She didn't get a dime, plus she got into trouble. Damn. And then I got hooked up with one who's a player. Oh, a player. So it doesn't matter if you're African or an American. If you got a player, you got to deal with it or get rid of it. I understand. Right? But you are so wonderful. Well, thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Doris. You. Okay. Have a wonderful okay. evening. You too, and have a good holiday. And you also, Doris. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye now. Doris from Brooklyn, everybody. I wanted to ask her more about the player, but I just, you know, I didn't want to put her through it. That's what we have driving our 18-wheelers. <laughs> that's why. I mean, that's why when I get on the turnpike, I stay in the car side. <laughs> Between those amphetamines that the truck drivers take and, and, you know, trying to earn the extra buck driving all damn night and hell to the no. And then you got Doris out there. <laughs> talking about somebody fond of my keys. <laughs> Here I go. Here I go. (laughs) (laughs) She's toasty right now, boy. Tatiana's in the Bronx. 
Excuse me, Tiana. Okay, can this be one of the last calls? Forget about it. Tiffany's waiting. Jamila's waiting. And Sharice is waiting. Tatiana is on... Well, it's line four. Tatiana's 29. I, hey, Tatiana. I'm trying to get Hi. a word in edgewise uh, regarding Paris Hilton. All right, she's got 600 animals, if you want to know how many animals she has. Here's her quote. Hi, it's actually Tiana. Hi, Tiana. Paris Hilton says, I've got so many pets, but I only take care of two. Tinkerbell and Bambi, they're two chihuahuas, because they live with me. The others are taken care of by a housekeeper. You see, that's why it's easy for her to have pets. She's not taking care of any of them. And it must be nice to have money. Exactly. So uh, would you take some money off of a green card? I see on the computer you're calling regarding that. Yeah, calling because I had an acquaintance. I wouldn't call her a friend. Mm -hmm. She tried to ask me, can my now fiance, it was my boyfriend at the time, marry her and she'll like give us money. And I'm like, of course not. Then she comes back and she asks a friend of his to marry her. So, of course, he does it. Okay. Like an idiot, he mm -hmm. goes in. They ask him the question. The first question they ask him is, what's her birth date? He doesn't know. <laughs> She's deported to Jamaica. So I say, be careful doing these things. Yeah. Because it's just, you know, it's like all of that you go through. She paid him the money. The first question they ask, what's her birthday? He has no idea. Dummies. Damn. Big dummy. But she's even a bigger dummy. So you can do it. Exactly. All right. Thank you for calling. Thanks, Wendy. Love you. Love you too. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, we're going to keep it in the Bronx because, um, boy, what did I see here? We're keeping it. Oh, because Sharice is on. Um, oh, oh Jamila's online too. Hey, uh, Jamila. Hey. What's going on? Um, yeah, I just called to make a comment on the marrying papers mm -hmm. and um i just wanted to let wendy know that i personally wouldn't marry for papers mm -hmm. but um my grandmother married uh, for papers and actually her husband actually fell in love with my mom oh. and tried to sleep with my mother so i don't trust these guys i think they're very wow grimy. wow thank you uh-huh bye-bye and tiffany's on line three from the bronx all right hi tiff hello hi yeah it's wendy is this Wendy? Mm-hmm. Hi, Wendy. Hi. What do you know at 23 about marrying somebody for some damn papers? I know. I was going to tell you about something that happened in my building. Oh, okay. Please do. This girl married this guy or whatever. She was like 18. And they said he gave her like, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then he just got arrested for beating her. Oh, great. <laughs> That's all it was. Great. And you've been horrible, like, but you're yeah, laughing. You my friend works at another radio station. I don't know if I can say it on the radio. Sure. She hates where, it. Where does she work? How many seven? Well, she's stuck there. I, I mean, uh, we don't even take uh, multiple interns. Uh, no. No, not like that. I mean, once you work at one radio station, make the most she of your... She leave. I bet she does. And I bet she doesn't just want to work at BLS. She wants to work specifically at my show. Yes, yeah, she does. Nope. What's, her, what's your friend's name? Her name is Erica. Erica what? Erica Jones. Okay, Erica Jones. Red flag that name, Zoe. You don't let that name pass through. Tell her, <laughs> tell her forget it, and enjoy where she's working. She works at Hot 97. She's from the Bronx. She's from, is she from the Bronx, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where does she go to school? Rutgers. Okay, she goes to Rutgers. Mm -hmm. Good school. Back there. Okay. Oh, sure. Thanks for calling. Hey, Tiffany, would you like to intern for the show? Yes. I would love to hire Tiffany just to show Erica. Would you really? Yeah, you can't bring her up here, though. I'm saying, though, that's all good. What do you do? What do you do for yourself? I'm a bio major. I uh, go to Rutgers also. Oh no, never mind. Why? I'm saying my Booker was a bio major, and now she's uh, in down with the entertainment. So how boring is your life going to be? <laughs> she turned down all the money for curing the common cold in a lab. I and, like it though. And now she's slumming. You know, it's like starting all over again. Elisa, she's got the baby and everything. <laughs> she and poor Maddox <laughs> trying to make it on a Booker for the experience some, uh, salary, <laughs> but she thinks that this is better than trying to cure a cold in a damn lab. You're crazy. Well. Well, thank you, Wendy. Well, thank you, Tiffany. Have a good day. Thank you very much. You Bye. too. Bye-bye. <sighs> Erica Jones <laughs> trying to <Wow>. escape. <laughs> Me and Star tried to tell you what it was. Oh. Right? Or was you go to the sloppy station? <laughs> 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 right? Tried to tell you what it was. Every time I talk to my friend, Miss Jones, she tells me what it is. 
<laughs> and believe me, her records match me in stars. But she's trapped. Exactly. <laughs> we got out of there just in time. Hey, right? Jones. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'll see you at Dawns and Divas. My radio station will be there to support me. No, you know, Jones had her birthday party. I'm up in there, you know, looking to see old faces to screw at. <laughs> Nobody comes in. It's just like the old days. Nobody supports Aww. nothing. Really yeah, oh, the hate is ridiculous, damn is. What? Yeah, I'll tell you some stories about them. Exactly. When we have the Dons and Divas, everybody will be there. Mr. Sutton, the 50-something and the 90-something. You know? Vinny, he'll be there. My general manager, Dion. The whole sales department. Everybody. Anthony Scott! Everybody will be there. It's not how it was back over there. It's old sloppy station. <laughs> Nobody support nothing. Not a damn thing. I still get shell-shocked. It's amazing. <laughs> I walk around here, I get support for stuff. When did you need support? What? You called me what? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wendy, we were just asking if you needed any help, you know, with, you know, whatever. Do you need any new computer? Is everything okay? What? You, what'd you say about my mother? <laughs> you know, I'm always ready to fight up here because I'm still shell-shocked. Shell-shocked. Ugh. Please, let her hate on the station. This is worth an extra 30 oh. seconds. Yeah, <laughs> Goose trying to take a break. Me and Hollywood know exactly what it was. Hollywood was over there, too. Telling them stories. We get to tell our stories. Yeah, shut my it. mic off now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where he says some, something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you know what? Let's just play our song, turn it up, and get ready to go into break. <laughs> Let it ride out. And this is not our song anymore. But this is my flashback song. <laughs> Star's flashback song. Trev's flashback song. And Jonesy's present day song. <laughs> Sorry for you, girl. Turn that up. What the business is, man. It's your boy, Young Jeezy. You're listening to the Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. You. Yeah. Thank you, son. Isaac Misrahi, famed designer of the high end and the low end, has got top his top ten fabulous holiday gifts. Now he says. A Bottega Veneta clutch. I have no idea how much that is. A subscription to three magazines. And his three that he recommends include the New York, Ma or New York Magazine and Marie Claire. A Hermes dog... I know, Hermes. Dog collar. With the matching leash. Well, you know what? If you have Isaac Mizrahi money, I guess this is easy. What the hell magazine did I get this out of? W? No, Marie Claire. You're talking to everybody, not just, uh, you know, people with money for a $100 Starbucks gift card. See, I like that because that's good. You can, you know, take whatever denomination you can afford, $25 or whatever. Everybody loves a Starbucks gift card. I love them. Um, stackable chairs. The one that he recommends is $330. Okay, so this is way out of our price ranges, isn't it? He says, any and all Isaac Mizrahi from tar Targets. Mm -hmm. Belgian loafers for everyone. <laughs> I love your loafers. Where did you get them? Belgian. <laughs> Isaac. Crazy. <clears throat> You know what I was talking to everybody about earlier? I was saying that Tony Braxton's son is kicking up dust there at his school. Well, yes. 
Tony has put her son Diesel into speech therapy in a bid to help him communicate with his classmates rather than bite them. Well, she was horrified when she learned about her two-year-old son Diesel's nasty habit, which led to him getting suspended from summer school. And here's what she says. I got a note sent home. The teachers gave a warning. Then they said, can you please come and pick up Diesel? We think he needs to be home for a couple of weeks. Imagine getting that kind of note and you're a working mother a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, let me just put everything on pause, including, including the promotion of your warm CD. It's not red hot. I'm talking about according to sales. You guys haven't gone out. I, I, personally, I like the CD. But it's, it's warm. So she's got to be out promoting this CD as much as she possibly can. And here's Diesel biting people. You know, <laughs> this is what she says. See, Diesel doesn't speak. He's had all kinds of tests. He's not autistic. They said some kids just don't talk until later. So he is in speech therapy. In school, he was fine. And in the summer classes, they have all the kids together, the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds, and the four-year-olds. So if they take something from him, he can't say, Give it back. So he bites them, which is fine, she says. But he started biting the teacher. Oh, my God. Yeah, teeth today, gun tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I have an acquaintance whose uh, son was not speaking until... And he still doesn't speak. As a matter of fact, uh, she... Huh? Diesel is too. Okay. But they start, you know, they're, they're they're kind of gabbing it up at two. They're trying to, you know, say something. This is what my girlfriend said. We, you know, my acquaintance. Uh, we had our kids at the same time, and so now they're both five years old. And so she had, um, she was in the area, and she brought her son by about two months ago. And I said to Kevin, our son, after you know she left with her son, how did you, you know, like, you know, I'll make up a name, Jordan. And so he said, no, Jordan doesn't talk. Well, it t turns out that my, um, my acquaintance's son, she wasn't worried about the non-speaking, wasn't worried, wasn't worried, wasn't worried. Finally, you know, her parents really started leaning on her. And I said to her gently, gently, I said, you know, why don't you get him tested? You know, I was talking to my mother about it, my mother's early childhood uh, specialist. Get him tested. And she taught learning disabled kids, learning disability specialists. That's, that's my mother's, um, you know, she got a double master's and all like that. So um, I said, well, why don't you get him tested? So she got him tested. Finally, turns out Jordan is autistic and is the subject of my girlfriend. Um, and anyway, this, this guy in graduate school is doing a doctorate on autism and, and is following Jordan around and all like that kind of like shadowing him and, and so on and so forth. But I, I can tell you that um, and I and I know this is not Tony's situation, but this is this particular woman that I'm speaking of. Her OBGYN told her it was OK to have an occasional glass of wine and a pull off some weed to. An occasional glass of wine and a pull to, yes, to settle the cramps and the nausea. I don't know that that was it, but, you know, I just, you know, you know, be careful of things like that, you know, when you're pregnant. No, I'm not saying this is Tony at all. I'm just, what I am suggesting is it too, if he's not, you know, if, if he's biting to communicate, mm, he needs one of speech therapist. Maybe he needs some more of those tests and a, a beat down. <laughs> and a uh, pow pow exactly <laughs> exactly okay Charlie is uh, 25 and wants uh, he's on line number 4 Goose wants to ask why he can't meet a nice girl let's see if we can analyze Charlie hey Charlie what's going on what's going on Wendy how are you 
I'm I'm alright. I'm alright. I just I, I just want the uh, female uh, perspective about things. Um, I just want to know. You got to turn your radio down, though, Charlie. Uh, all right, all right. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I've been out of uh, my relationship for about like two years. I mean, and um, for some reason, I'm meeting hood rats, girls with tattoos on their necks, girls with five, six babies. I I just want to know from you. Where you know where could a guy? I'm, I'm 25. I mean, I just want to know. Where, well, what do you, what do you have to offer to a woman? Well, I mean, I you know I, I got a good job. I mean, um, because, I got a good job because sometimes what we attract is a direct reflection of who we are. So, well, I, I understand you have a good job. Uh, what, what type of good job is that? Well, I mean, it's it's uh, in the medical field, it's medical transportation. I work with a lot of uh, oh, you know you. elderly people. Oh, you know okay. things okay. like that. Okay. You know, um, but I'm saying, I mean, I'm a good looking guy. Yeah, yeah. It's just. Well, you, you, you sound. Yeah. yeah, that was Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, you got to kiss a lot of frogettes to find your print. Frogettes. Frogettes. Female frogs. Oh, uh, yeah. Before yeah. before you finally find your princess, Charlie. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, Are you going to be at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza? Nah, I don't. Nah, I, I'm gonna be at the uh, comedy experience tomorrow. Though I know that. All right, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, lot, I'm gonna slide up in there. A uh, lot of nice ladies in there. Yeah, yeah. I heard. Yeah, I heard you talking about that. It's so a real I, good look. Shout out to Ken Black, by the way, who uh, is listening. Um, I forgot what he said he was doing, but he was listening in our last segment before going into the break, and then he called up and he said that we were funny. So, okay. thank you, Ken yeah. Black. We'll see you tomorrow night, too. Uh, uh, yeah, all right, Wendy, can I shout out one people right quick? Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, all right, shout out to Pro, uh, my man Blunt, Quan, P, uh, Terrain, DJ, all oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Charlie's angry. <laughs> I don't want to meet a man who's 25 with a friend named Blunt. <laughs> uh, no, 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 he's a, he's a good guy. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. He earned that name, you know? That's all. <laughs> all right, Wendy, love you. Loving? Well, well, loving back at you, Charlie. <laughs> I guess he meant love you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Uh, oh, now, Elisa is uh, on Live 5, and she missed that on the Prince story yesterday. So I guess I'll wrap this up, and then we can probably get out of here, practically. Elisa? Hi, Wendy. It's Alicia. So I said that Prince... Yeah, I need to know about the Prince story from yesterday. Yeah, he showed up at this club in, in California, like 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, what happened? And, you know, he's with his people, and he's out on the dance floor. Mm-hmm. And he was overheard saying to some of his people, where are all the black people? <laughs> and and that's the story. That's it? That's the story. And this is in L.A.? Yes. Okay, real quick, I have one of my coworkers. He wants to say hi. Okay. He don't want to, okay, he doesn't want to say hi. He's shy. Oh, what happened? So, right. we're working late here in South Jersey, Exit 4 and Turnpike in Mount Laurel. Wow, I, I lived on Exit 4. I know, you lived in Mountain Malton? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I know, we're just working late here. What we are you? Crossway Shield. Okay, there you go, all right. Mm-hmm. We're well, here on Turnpike. It, it's very nice uh, to have you here. You too. What are you listening on the computer? Because Power 99 I'm, doesn't carry the bonus hour. Yeah, I listen online all day. I don't like listening on 99. Too many commercials and the music and all. Yeah, well, I mean, they have to do something in between. I know, but you I get all the extra stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, I was gonna say, you know, here in New York, I get I squeeze in a nice big extra break. I know. Every hour. I know. I, I didn't know you like Tony Braxton so much either. Uh, I do. I, I mean, I think she's. I like. I like her, but I don't think she always has to wear the black bathing suits for every song she sings on stage. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing about Tony, and this is why I really love her. I mean, it's already a given that she's a really talented singer and performer. But mm-hmm. but my love is to the to the next level. And for me, it takes some next level thing other than your, your given talent. And for, for me, it, with Tony, it's that she survived, a, you know, a busted breast implant. She survived, you know, the heart situation. She talks openly about her nose job. She talks openly about the breast implant she used to have. She talks openly about the um, the the fibroids. Mm-hmm. You know, she talks openly about getting dissed by that loser Curtis Martin. Mm-hmm. She she loved being on Broadway. She was forced to talk about her bankruptcy because it leaked to the press, but she never tried to hide it. Right. She's hot, hot, hot to death. When she was younger, she dated the hottest. When she was a little bit older, she dated the hottest. All of a sudden, she met Carrie. Really That's it. She she <laughs> ma- they got married. They have these two great kids. 
Um, she looks fabulous, whether she has long hair or short hair, like That's smashed true. bald. And and she's a woman of a certain age. And I just think that she, has, she, Tony is one of those women who I think of when I think of I'm every woman, it's all in me. Right. I think Tony Braxton. No, she's not a platinum success with this new CD. But you know what? She's but it's good. She's been there. She has something that a lot of these new, these platinum success girls wish that they had, and that is uh, uh, the, the, the whole extra woman package thing going, and she's got good snap back. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Wendy, well, I love you, and I'm listening. I love you too, Alicia. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I love you all for listening today. Don't forget to go on our website. It's such a big deal. I can't wait to get back here tomorrow and find out the results. Would you marry somebody to make them a U.S. citizen? Yes or no? Go to the WendyWilliamsExperience.com where, by the way, you can find out more information about the Dons and Divas extravaganza. If you are already into your PayPal, you've got to have like a PayPal account, right? Right. If you have a PayPal account, go to PayPal.com. Get your tickets. Otherwise, listen for your chance to win. We'll be back tomorrow with more information, more gossip, more advice, more guests, more of what you come here for. It's the Wendy Williams Experience every weekday from 2 to 7 right here in New York on WBLS. And Vaughn Harper's next with The Quiet Storm. Love you. Bye.